Oh no! Sir, you're, you're recording with beers that we haven't... It was a poor form. But, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to take my time with this. That's fine. That's fine. Um, should Wait, we, uh, I was going to say, well, we haven't actually talked about any <laughs> sort of topic or whatever. We, we've, we've literally been I've had, prepping for so an I've extra had, two I've hours. I've had a couple in my mind okay. to talk to. Welcome to Tanked Up, the podcast about beers and video games. I'm Ben. I'm here with Adol. Hey! Hey! I'm in the garage. Hooray! Garage, garage. The warm garage. Yeah. It's not cold today. No, it's not. The heat has been on all day. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. God, power bill's going to suck. <laughs> Ooh. Oh yes, it's 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 hitting the heights that it um, rarely hits. Um, Such great heights. Uh, at the moment, it's just you and I. Lucy may be joining us in a little bit. She's currently out on location, sipping a few beers. Yeah, I think. Um, before we start, we've had a couple of beers. What? What have we drank? What did we enjoy? Before we get into topics oh, and games man. and things, um, we had uh, something about being a mayor, running for mayor, the Barcelona from garage. Yeah. Yeah, brewing company. Yes, the Barcelona Vice Raspberry Beer, Vice Vice of Beer. Vice with, of Beer. I can't remember how they described it, but it was a Vice of Beer with raspberries. So after that, I didn't even notice the raspberry when I picked it up from the bottle shop, and then I was very surprised when I poured it, and it was red. <laughs> very red. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this is not what Vice of Beers look like. It was nice. It was a nicer beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It, well, it, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Um, I think kind of the main thing. That, uh, you pointed out at first was that it starts off a little bit tart and then the malts kick in and just just drop it down a little bit don't they yeah and make the, it a little bit more of like a biscuity yeah i mean the, it's, it's also not an in-your-face tartness it's really mm. tart but it's not it's i guess um when you said it wasn't sharp i think yes yeah yeah um and yeah and i think when the biscuitiness sort of kicks in you're like oh okay mm. this is like so it has, like, as let's just know I, li I like a bit of a curved taste profile yeah i like when things sort of change places or mm. get weaker and then stronger and different things are noticeable then and this sort of did that trade-off with the malt sort of tempering down the the tartness and then then both the tart and the malt sort of just fade slowly together yeah. um it i think in that like degree of malty taste in a not so like raspberry forward beer would taste biscuity mm. but it was so much uh, raspberry that it was like this is a biscuity malt flavor, but it does not taste biscuity. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, completely. It just dragged it down, so the raspberry kind of it, it came forward in sort of like a, a, a more flavorful kind of way. It wasn't that sharp, wasn't tart. It, it just sort of like showcased that raspberry quite nicely. I think for me, it kind of I can't remember exactly what I said about it, but it made it more uh, like a, a raspberry flavored dessert. Mm, that kind yeah. of level of raspberry that you'd get, rather than a sharpness. Um, yeah, like almost like a um, a really sort of like a rich raspberry mousse yeah. or something. Yeah, like definitely. like where it's like it's 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 clear the fruit is in here, but mm. it's been sort of whipped up or something into into a thing, so we get the raspberry taste, but not like the not from like just a face full of raspberries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And the second one, uh, the second one was from Odyssey. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what it was called. It was called Fuck uh, Far Beyond Beyond Far Far something. Like that. Okay, uh, um, there were only two beers that I've seen from obviously out in the bottle shop. Did you take a picture? I did, but I don't think I caught the name on the side. Um, it's a double IPA. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one that I had a couple of weeks ago was called Show Me a Hero, I think. That's right, yeah. So it's the other one. Mm -hmm. Same same can art, but it's green yeah. instead of pink or purple, Purpley, I think, from the pr yeah, previous yeah. one. Uh, but it was nice. I um, really liked it, actually. Um, it, it was odd on that first taste because you got a little bit of that Smokiness. fruitiness and then just smokiness yeah the like, smokiness wasn't really described on the can no um and it's i mean i love single malts for my life mm. i love me a, a drink that tastes like campfire <laughs> and this was like oh shit this is an, clearly an ipa but also definitely it's an ipa filtered through a campfire this is yeah great. yeah um and but it, it did i mean it didn't outside of that it did sort of what you would want from a dipper mm. really well you know, it, it was I think eight percent. Yeah. Um, but didn't taste eight percent. Um, it again is sort of a more modern IPA, so it, it wasn't like a smack in the face of mm -hmm. bitterness, but it clearly had the bitter character. Um, it had you know some mangoey, I think. We yeah, said, yeah. So, uh, some sort of tropical fruit tastes. Um, and then yeah, and it was just this nice undertone of of, of smoke. Mm. It was very good. Uh, it went down 
probably a little bit quicker than the the Berliner Weiss. Yeah, uh, a little bit easier to drink, quite smooth. Uh, I don't know whether it's maybe I know you said there was a bit of spout in there. Yeah. Uh, whether it was the, the 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 malts kicking through, which gave it a very smooth, slightly thicker kind of body to it. It was it's slightly yeah. slightly viscous. Not you know not not super thick, not syrupy. Yeah, but uh, but it had that kind of that quality that maybe you uh, put towards something that's got like oats in it. Where it right. Just, just yeah. thickens it just a little bit, and I think that made it kind of go down even easier yeah than had it have been kind like of some like other kind of, yeah. yeah yeah so very very easy beer to drink and the alcohol didn't show through really at all at all yeah mm. so beers for this evening uh the first we're going to drink probably leads us on to a little bit of a, uh, a discussion around it yeah um we're going to be drinking the cloud water uh what is it actually called Present cloud water IPA. celebrating our family cloud water present ipa autumn winter sure uh so it's a limited edition artwork set of our ipa to celebrate the community involved in our first beer festival friends and family and beer there's a lot of people named on this beer uh and i cannot see any i think it, all the, the text. actual ingredients all the text is just yeah, all of the people there, their yeah. address and just saying wheat barley and oats our allergens, uh, yeah. allergens yeah 6.5 percent Nice can. Yeah. I like that. It looks like a little being holding a hop. Is that what it is? I don't know. To be honest, every time I look at it, I'm like, I, I'm not convinced being it's not just scribbles. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to read all of these people? No, you're There's not. lots it's, of it's people. It's a thanks to. Um, and so, but why, why did you want to sort of say that there is more of a backstory? So, there's a, back, a bit of a backstory to this. I wanted to pick up a Cloudwall beer. Yeah. Almost kind of like in support for them because they did hold their first uh, beer festival, um, which I think was just called. This says it's friends and family and beer. I thought it was just called friends and family. Anyway, they uh, held their first day over the weekend, which by all accounts went very successfully. A lot of people who were there said it, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, they then got shut down because the venue they were at didn't have a license. And they uh, thought I, they did, or something like that. So, obviously they thought they did, because yeah. they they sold booze for the first day. And they must have got to a certain point in this that they realised they could go ahead and that they thought everything was fine. But we'll yeah. talk about a little bit about that in a in a moment. I'm just going to do a try pour. and pour out so it's not too... It's quite... Um... Uh, quite carbonated, actually. Yeah. So, so that pour was a little quick, but it still was a, a one and a half fingers, which, to be honest, Don, I like UK IPA from one of these sort of more boutique -y things. It's usually a little less head. Yeah, I mean, even on, a, even on a slightly slower pour, yeah. there's uh, maybe about half the head yeah. that we got from the... Um, the Odyssey. And, yeah. yeah. Mmm. It's got a nice... Ignore the... Beer. Beer, yes. Uh, it's very kind of... Very pale, really pale, yeah. super hazy. Oh yeah, it's, you cannot see through it. You can like, if I'm not in the light, I can't actually see like even my fingers, the shadows. Like, it's it's no yeah. even in even in the light. Yeah, nothing comes through. It's um, what is that? It's a little more orange than honey. Yeah, yeah, slightly. Um, it gets but, a little little sort of creamier, a little yeah. lighter around the edge, perhaps sort of. It's got a nice nose to it, very light. Yeah. It's like a, a nice fluffy IPA smelling. So like I mm. think I'm I, I'm assuming there's some let me see, I think probably Mosaic? Maybe. Mm. Slightly tropical. Yeah, I was like But not much. And no. I'm not getting a lot of um citrus off the nose. Mm. Um, no, not at all. But it, wow! But but there is that like sort of midway between mango and passion fruit on the nose. There is, and in the flavour, it's got that very oh. like very slight sweetness kind of wrapped in the middle of that, yeah. that juicy sort of fruitiness. Which I mean, not 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 juicy. Maybe that is what the sweetness is. Is a slight little bit more juiciness. Yeah. But it's kind of wrapped around this or wrapped in this very fruity kind of body, which gives way to this very slight bitterness. I was going to say, yeah, I think that accentuates, like, when the bitterness kicks in, it, mm. it kind of feels like it's... It, because all the fruitiness is quite light, it kind of feels like 
you don't notice there's a gap until like the bitterness sort of floods the gap. Mm. Like so, if it didn't have this interplay, you'd be like, "Well, this is a really light beer." But you sort yeah. of it makes you think, "Oh, this this is a bold um, sort of mm. hoppy bitterness because everything before it's really light." Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. And I think it sort of after that bitterness kind of kicks in, it's got this very light kind of creaminess to it. Saying, and that's the other thing, as you say, is that there's this creamy finish, but mm. also, um. Kind of like the Odyssey, it's got a little bit of viscosity there. Yeah, slightly. And so it coats the tongue a little, mm. and that that helps this sort of creaminess and the sort of finish of the taste. Um, sort of feel creamier. I think it gives it a bit more heft. Yeah, definitely. I, I what was it about six point five percent? Yeah. I wonder whether that's a little. That little sweetness maybe is yeah. just that at six point five. Like maybe not. Yeah, maybe the tastes aren't masking it, and mm. in fact they're just sort of embracing that. Yeah, possibly. Because yeah, right. it kind of linger that that sweetness does linger very just just a little bit, and, and maybe the more we drink the the more that will fold into mm. the, the the flavor, and and it will disappear very slightly. Um, I mean, it's going to go down so quickly. Quickly. I mean, the other thing is the um, that bitterness is super interesting. There's also something like that all is coming on at that bitterness that I can't quite place um mm. like there's a character about it that's like it's, it's almost not i mean it's it's kind of edging towards um like a slightly sour grapefruitiness uh whether the it, yeah, it, yeah it, I hear it, what you're does, saying. it does a little bit like, yeah uh, but i think i don't get a lot of citrus very, from it no, no no there's not a lot of citrus but it's maybe um it's like it's right in the background yeah and, and it comes about around about the same time as that bitterness so whether that is you know that's a a, a hop kicking in mm. that gives you that underlying kind of uh grapefruitiness yeah but they've used it in a way which kind of enhances the bitterness perhaps, yeah, yeah. which is why they kind of come side by side and why maybe that bitterness has something else to yeah. it it has a slight kind of a very slight dankness yeah in there. that's kind of yeah. what it is yeah so it's, it's a little dank, but like mm. just a little. So yeah. like it, what? It, like unless you're like really trying to analyze it, it just sort of is like, oh, that's an interesting bitter taste. Like yeah. it just twists the bitter taste to be like it's not just sort of a bitter hoppy taste. There's something going on, mm. and it doesn't really matter what that something is in a sense. It's sort of like just an interesting sort of yeah, yeah. moment on the palate. Mm. Mm, that's nice. Oh yeah, that's a good beer. Um, so yes, Cloudwater, they um, start up their own festival and from kind of the, the 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 blog that cloudwater released um the 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 morning of or the evening of the the first day right. uh leading into the, or the morning of the second day and kind of like what i've seen from twitter and everyone's reactions and things is that uh they essentially weren't allowed to continue in the location that they had uh there was something to do with the issues with the licensing yeah and they weren't allowed to sell booze in their location and they had to scramble to find suitable locations to essentially send people to and to put on all of the beers that they had stockpiled for the thing, yeah. I mean I think like, I, I mean, just to just to run through I mean look like we've got like garage beer company yeah. uh, dry and bitter Duggars Verdant, we've got beers so Tool. yeah I mean like burnt mill burning skies so we've got yeah. some beers that are coming from close we've got some beers that are coming from sort uh, of, Tool, yeah, yeah exactly like, from Europe that yeah. must have been sort of like brought in so they must have had a bunch of booze that they couldn't. They couldn't do anything put, with. Yeah. And they're thinking, "Oh Oof. shit, what are we gonna do?" Like that might be why they why you they might have said our friends and family event because the beer was such an issue. Like it was friends and family and beer, and then we realized that we, at the venue, all we could have was friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to think. So they did it for a day. Yeah. So they must have been under an assumption that everything was fine. Yeah. That everything checked out. You know, someone must have told them that this was okay. Oh, yeah, it's and clearly you, like some massive under oversight. Yeah, you've got to think that you know they would have done all of their due diligence yeah. checks and and made sure that everything was kind of fine for then suddenly something to well, especially like to not clock. day of but like night of like finding out like oh actually you broke the law for half your festival. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's great that kind of like the the, the Manchester community, uh, you know, Clarewood are a big part of Manchester yeah. community, so it's great that they kind of rallied round and found, found various places to throw beer at yeah exactly and to kind of send people to um i don't know whether there was an all-in festival 
I mm. would assume it was, you know, a uh, standard ticket. Yeah. Drink as much as you want. Try the beers no, that you like, I mean, sort uh, of like all in. Yeah. So, you know, they have to find venues that are happy to honour that. That someone's bought a ticket for a weekend or for the day. Yeah, presumably they're paying off these new venues to buy their space. <sighs> Who knows? Because, I mean, I mean, I mean, if I was running a pub and I needed to make money on a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever it was, I couldn't just be like, well, these people have tickets. So, can you... You and your staff put these kegs I've just delivered, mm. hook them up, and then just serve them. Yeah, in a in a country that doesn't have strong tipping. Well, like, so, yes. so there's no. So, yeah, so, exactly. I say that yeah, not yeah, in yeah. like a, a knock, but it's like so. There's no other vector for any remuneration of, for this stuff. Like, it, it, completely, it, completely. Yeah. It, it must have come from either just the goodwill that Cloudwater have. Maybe yeah. it's gone to um, tap rooms and. Uh, pubs that they have relationships with already mm. uh, that they know they could kind of you know that, that are friends and family that yeah. they could lean into and say look could you just put these two beers on here and actually we're then going to put these three beers on here and you know maybe we only get one line over yeah. in this pub and actually people turn it more into a pub crawl than yeah. being kind of in one venue and I mean you know, we kind of got to try and stagger that like the the, the logistics I was gonna say, the it. logistics it sounded like a insane. nightmare yeah I'm, I'm glad I don't work in I'm glad I work in the philosophy of logic and not logistics <laughs> um, yes when I uh, when I um, quit my job to go do my masters of logic um, the HR lady uh, on my exit interview was like yeah but you know you're gonna you're gonna go to europe and you're gonna be so you're gonna like conquer the world of logistics or something i'm like oh for fuck's sake <laughs> ah. like it's not words that share letters mm, mm. but you have suddenly, more letters you know, suddenly, are generally not the same thing suddenly an entrepreneur in the haulage business yeah, it's just like fuck yeah anyway um yeah it sounds it sounded like a light nightmare but I'm, yeah uh as you said, they, they 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 had a second day. It was obviously not ideal for everyone involved, but it seems like it. What could be done was done. Yeah, yeah, yeah completely. And, and again, I think a lot of that has to has to revolve around the fact that they just have a lot of goodwill, and mm. because they're such a part of the community. Yeah, I I kind of, <coughs> I mean, sort of like not two minds about it, but someone somewhere must have known. Or something. Yeah. I mean, how I so there, there's there's there is there is got to be some culpability somewhere. Oh, someone. For oh, yeah. The there was uh, a ball the, and someone dropped it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know that that I don't know where that lies. I haven't got a clue where that's come yeah, from. And we, I mean, and we may never know. We you know, shouldn't uh, know. Actually. Probably not. You know. Um, so <sighs> there's there's got to be something somewhere that. You know, when you're looking at doing one of these festivals, there must be so many kind of like hoops and things oh, yeah. to jump through, so much to make sure that you have in place and signed and things. Yeah. And you know, for all intents and purposes, like you can you can you know sign like fifty documents and think right, we're done. That's cool. Yeah. Everything seems like it's in place. Yeah. We look like we've got the certificates that we need. We think that this venue is licensed. This says that it is. Yeah, uh, and, and we, we don't know. Like, know it, it could like, have been the case that they had a like limited population, like a limited license, and so they said we have uh, a license, yeah, possibly, and it turns yeah, out yeah, yeah. like, oh yeah, but you will need a license for like three hundred people, and that's a different beast. Yeah, like, maybe. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of like things, we, and we don't need to speculate, but um, hmm. it does. So if our job, our careers suddenly like fall apart, I think we should actually go into uh, beer festival logistics. <laughs> <laughs> where, where you're detail oriented, I, I. I conceptually think to do our powers combined we could like look at a place and be like okay so what are the problems that might happen cool we, we can make sure your festival goes off without a hitch all we need is a <laughs> lot of money because now apparently our careers have collapsed under this <laughs> fiction um, <laughs> but also free tickets <laughs> well yeah and, and you know we are beer if you're if you're hiring yeah. and you're paying around what am i mate like 35k a year Sure. I wish I was. Why not? 35 <laughs> I'm, not I'm not quite there. That's that's my limit. Ah, if, yeah, if they yeah. were paying 35, I'm there. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. done. I'm, I'm ready to go. Like, um, so yeah, uh, you know, our resumes are drink. Uh, we drink a say, lot of beer, well, and we've been to our lots, resumes we've to are we like. we've recorded 150 odd episodes, <laughs> and I have just made the claim that he's detail oriented, and I'm conceptually thinking, conceptually able. We'll say, and if that's not enough, come on. 
But obviously we come as a team too. Oh, obviously, yeah, yeah. Not for 35k. No, no. <laughs> well, we come for 35ks. <laughs> uh, anyway, so enough uh, pretend shilling for a thing that's not a thing. Um, mm. Yeah, so, I mean, it's... It, it, I'm, I'm, I was also happy to hear that there was sort of another beer festival going on that... Um, and it's it's nice to see a brewer putting it on rather than like the Bristol yeah. Craft Beer Festival, which is like or like usually it's like someone's doing this and they're bringing all these people and here's like look we're a brewer but we aren't like being super fascistic uh, capitalists in the sense that we're like hey everybody who know us because you like our beer have you heard of all these people these mm. are other beers you could be drinking yeah, instead yeah. of ours like that's that that again that shows that the I mean, we know we're big fans of Cloudwater, but like they're yeah. they're 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 not doing things for purely for the bottom line. Uh, like it's just clear by doing a friends and family and beer thing where it's not about cloud Cloudwater beer; it's about good beer in their city. Yeah, I, I love seeing these types of things. Right, completely, completely. I think um, what was it? Who was it? Beaver Town. Uh, I cannot remember the name of their festival, but they've been doing it for a few years, and I know there yeah. was a little bit of um, contention around last year's festival when they got taken over you know when beaver town got bought right. out by a, a, a bigger company uh, and a few people didn't want to participate any further because of that because yeah. of that um so i mean it, it, it is good to see kind of other brewers showcasing other people making beer and like looking at this there's this there's, there's several brewers who i've not heard of uh, who are maybe very kind of like oh, local wow. so people like arizona way. wilderness don't know uh, no I, i've not heard about them uh, you know, there's, there's. I know with with Canada, there's lots of laws around about distribution yeah. and, and kind of like selling your beers out of state and all of those yeah. sorts of things. I'm not sure how that relates with the with the US either, but I know kind of they're very state focused a lot of the time. I think. Yeah, I mean, unless you're really big, like Sierra Nevada or something. You, you, yeah, unless you generally, hit, unless you you've jumped that yeah. kind of like that next level. Um, but yeah, like there's there's and there's some that like collective arts and creature comforts. I'm mm. a big fan of. Um, yeah, there's some really interesting, um, and I mean, even like dragging Brewdog down as well. And, and, I, don't, and I think dragging like, Brewdog down is dragging usually Brewdog said to the festival, yeah, bringing them as well, given that they are like the poster boys of um, now kind of too big for craft beer, beer. sure, yeah, yeah. Like, if people are complaining, unless it's like a buyout, like you said, if people are complaining about the size of craft brewers. Mm. Um, they tend to be complaining about. Let's see if I can focus on it. Right. So, yeah. if if you want to know on screen, go to YouTube, and that is the list. Or do a Google image search. I'm sure that that's works. true. Oh no, the yeah. I didn't even notice that one. Yeah, there. like Wylam, Verdon. Yeah, I mean, there's we, loads we, of people there. Loads of them. It turns out we've drunk a lot of beer, and so we've had a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. That's very true. Someone asked me because they're like, "Oh, I didn't know you did a podcast." And mm. I was like, "I oh, am." Yeah. And then they're like, "So you must have you you must play have played a lot of video games in your life." I'm like, "Yeah, probably." Uh, and then they're like, "Some." And, and then they're like, and, "And drunk a lot of beer." And I'm like, "Oh, yeah." So it's like I recognize that I drew, there are people out there who drink way more than I do, mm. volume wise. But I was sure. like, actually, because we consistently do this, where we're looking for new beers. We have definitely tried way more varieties of beers than the average person. Even like people in the realm, I think, because every week, even when I go out, I'm now on the same idea of I haven't tried that. Yeah, yeah, um, because I'm just my mode approaching to beer is new. Find it, try it. Yeah, I, I, I again, and we're forced I, to at least have three a week. Yeah, <laughs> new. As, but I was like, it's sort of. I mean, a new part of what makes this hobby, if you can call it that. Um, interesting is is doing the new stuff but i, I didn't so i didn't connect that because we do this we're even more like we've gone further down that path than the average person i suspect yeah but more than likely and yeah. I, I think there's um you know there's times i know when uh you know my 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 mum's partner it probably drinks more than i do you know he goes to uh, skittles every week uh you know I, various no matter every social... time i hear that i just think it's a bunch of people <laughs> eating the sweets and i just he goes to it. various yeah. you know various Events. social activities where he will drink but he will drink kind of the uh the real ale that is you know that is on offer yeah. in there whether that's something like speckled hen or pride or whatever right. is kind of around he will drink more than i have but 
he hasn't drunk even even now over his like 50 years of life yeah he's definitely drunk fewer types of beer than you yeah, yeah i mean yeah. i that's massive speculation he which, may have he may have drunk a, which is a great name for a beer <laughs> that is very good yes. yeah um but yeah no but it was just it sort of struck me when someone was actually like asking those questions like oh even for people who seek this out uh, we actually probably have tried more beers um I than mean, a lot of them because some because like, you why like going to the bottle, bottle shop and hunting and packing because you need to for the audience is a slightly different piece i think but it, it, i mean it is but you see i don't know whether it's because people are catering to their audiences and things but having uh, uh having the podcast on instagram mm. has kind of made me look at it a little bit more and seeing that it is a, it is a different beast to to twitter definitely yeah, um yeah. and that actually there's there's some people and in their profile on their instagram page they're like currently at three thousand unique beers on untapped oh really you're uh, like fuck so maybe maybe i just don't know how dedicated these other people are well some other people you know so i i assume some other people go out and they buy like 10 beers a week just and they never right. buy the same yeah, yeah. beer so they're drinking I, like 500 I yeah i know. guess really it was like oh I, I never considered that i've probably had more varieties of beer than a lot of people yeah we'll say that we'll yeah. take it away Possibly from the, than the average yeah, 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 yeah definitely yeah. the average person yeah. Because there are people who don't drink beer, so the average beer drinker, perhaps. Mm. Yes, I also most beer drinkers. So yeah. Anyway, and, and, uh, I mean, the, and, yeah, and, and that shows you. That still shows you as well because craft is only a very small percentage of it's overall like beer kind of fade. Yeah. Then oh well, yeah, eight percent. It's probably yeah. around. I think it was like nine percent, something like that. That the actual craft beer market makes up oh, in like the, overall beer and lager kind of sales i'll say that's it's, gross it's, sales it's, right uh, yeah, yeah and it's it's really small so there's us drinking all of these you know new beers yeah. trying as many as we can and then there's just people out there just going i'll just go and buy another crate of carlin and there's also but there's also so what i what what i think we we lose is in, in that comparison is there are people who like the regularity but like the quality and so there are people sure. who are like yep you know the keller pills I'm gonna have a my my that's my standard beer, yeah. and like it's usually cast in this like well you either just drink beer that you, you're used to or you like all this and actually you could like sort of these craft tastes but also like the stability of oh, that's uh, the beer uh, like. completely and with some of them you know being available in supermarkets and stuff yeah Northern Monk New World IPA yeah great beer I could happily you know if if craft beer evaporated industry just somehow, evaporated yeah. and New World IPA you know was the only beer that Northern Monk made, I could drink that just, yeah. you know, forever, essentially. But there might be people that do that. They go yeah. into Morrison's well, the I think and they go, oh, it's a, four, like a four pack. Yep, yeah. I'll, just, I'll just grab one of these. Well, and I, I know people it. who like, like uh, every time we went to a house party, uh, a friend of mine used to bring the uh, the Elvis Juice Brewdog one. Was oh yeah, the really yeah. grateful yeah, yeah. one, yeah. Um, and if that wasn't sort of in cycle or whatever, it'd be the Dead, the dead Pony Club. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's like, and it, it was like no there's the beer i'm like you know, like there's other like interesting ipas like in the fridge beside this but it wasn't it, he, the point was he liked this taste mm. and i think that like yeah i think that's probably a lot of sort of the wider variety of, of like like brew dog for example yeah. just in general i think all, people are like oh this is a really good beer i'm flipping my standard to this mm. rather than now i see that there's all these new unique tastes so i'm going to go be a crazy person and try and have them all <laughs> yeah um but yeah, anyway, that's uh, that's uh, that's my pseudo topic. Nice quasi quasi topic. Quasi topic. Quasi topic. Yeah, it, was, it was a topic. It wasn't a not a topic. Yeah, completely. Completely. Um, this is this has been prefix clarification, the sub sub segment. <laughs> <laughs> Just thrown in for everybody. Uh, write in to tankdepcast at gmail .com if you have a pre prefix clarification you need for us to settle next week. <laughs> so we'll get a jingle. I've played some games shit i know i know i know um and i kind of i didn't really want to talk about the games necessarily i kind of want to talk about the services that i'd received those games on so uh eagle-eyed readers of out of lives will notice that i posted up a uh, article all about playstation plus mm -hmm. and how it's changed how uh, they've taken away playstation 3 and vita games from the service. I'm sad about the Vita. I make the PS3. I'm surprised at last. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I'm only sad because, I mean, the Vita's been dead for basically as long as the PS3. <laughs> um, um, but it's just it was like, like 
it, it made a to total sense to get rid of both of them. Um, but I still have a Vita. I still have a PS3, actually. But, like, because it's a handheld, it has more longevity. So it's like, yeah, oh, I could... Yeah. Blah. So it's like, oh, getting this... Although I'm not... I'm get, getting back on PS Plus soon. Um, and so it was nice to know that, like, I was getting this free library from mm, them. Uh, or every month getting, like, a couple new... Or a new game that maybe I don't give a shit about. But maybe I do. And that's another reason to use that wonderful piece of hardware. Complete, uh, so... I wanted to kind of uh, touch on for uh, for us whether with with PlayStation dropping all of these titles, you know, we uh, for PlayStation Four, you occasionally got like four titles a month because of things like crossplay with Vita. Uh, but whether quality outshines quantity, what? Because uh, because for me, it completely does. No, no, I I, I think that um, Steam's approach <laughs> in the past five years Plus, has been. Do we talk about Rape Day? Or whatever the fuck that game was called. No, let's oh, talk about what we're talking about oof, now. Let's, oof, let's, let's, we, we may come back to that. We may come back. I think we don't simply because of the day we're recording. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, fuck, yeah. All right, no, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, it'll be posted afterwards, but, like, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, quality versus quantity. Obviously, quality is should be more important. You might think that they're close, but if you just want... Any threshold view of quantity beating quality, will, will, you'll have an exploitation of a, a shit ton of crap games suddenly mattering more. Easy. So I hate all these games, but I like that I have seven hundred. Yeah, well, like I, so we 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 run through kind of the the PlayStation Plus games that I had on my yeah. account um, since I switched over to, to to my main account, kind of like six, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that ago, right. actually. Close to a year, I think. Yeah, it must be about a year. Yeah. Must, must might be even longer than that. Maybe sort of like fifteen odd months, something like that. Yeah. Actually, uh, and I had about number, yeah. about forty games on there, yeah. something like that. And I played maybe five or six of them. Yeah, really more than maybe ten minutes or so of. Uh, some of them I had played, but I played them when they previously them, come out. Yeah. I'd already owned them and I'd already played them. So maybe out of all of those games, I played forty percent of them. Perhaps mm. that's a bit generous, maybe, but. Uh, you know, through PlayStation Plus, I'd only played maybe 10%, maybe a little bit more than that, 15, 20%, right. perhaps. Uh, you know, maybe eight games out of 40, being generous. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if that had been a slightly more, not even curated list, because the previous lists were very, I would assume, were curated. That It was someone's job to go out and find games that they thought were kind of very broad ranging to give a, yeah. a, a nice kind of like balance to games and, and I think with... it was more it's it was there, there weren't a lot of there was like occasionally like indie darlings but usually it was mm. mid-tier double-a yeah. games yeah a lot of them were yeah um and and i think that's the so there's nothing wrong with a double-a game it doesn't necessarily mean bad quality but if you're consistently aiming at that pool mm. um one you're gonna have a lot of games people aren't might not load up yeah um and and uh, i think what you were saying earlier was it's not even about like a triple a title or like you know a flashy game it's it's like what you want is um some of the unique games to this platform like, yes why the service if it's giving games away the service should give give games away that showcase why you might want to be on the service yeah or on, on the platform yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah completely um and it's 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 kind of like an interesting take because it's very different to what uh, Games Pass is kind of yeah. doing, um, you know, trying to get as many games as possible from third parties, yeah. and obviously they're exclusive that they're bringing. But out I mean, like that's the key, though, in. right? Is that the key with Games Pass is they already have cornered the like, yeah, no, we're putting our titles here. Yep, we've already solved that question. So now, now that those are definitely going to be there after some amount of lag, what's next? Yeah, yeah, completely. And I think PlayStation Plus is. I think it's the right direction of make give games people are excited about, mm. well, and that that includes indie darlings and stuff. Well, hopefully, yeah. I mean, like the the witness is not a big budget game. No, nope. it's not a triple A game. It the, is it is probably a mid -tier, meant, it is a mid tier game, but it's one of my favorite games. I was uh, saying, but it was also critically lauded, right? Yeah, this is completely. what I mean about like it's yeah. mid tier double A in the sense of mid tier like critically reviewed or like lauded or whatever. It doesn't so like if it's not a first party title that you've heard of but we got mediocre reviews mm. it's kind of a game you kind of know about but got mediocre reviews it's not a huge selling point of well you got 
seven of those for free last year. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so like it doesn't have to be the flashiest thing, mm -hmm. but if if it's critically lauded or like really like made an impact in 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 like gaming or like it was talked about a bunch, even if it wasn't critically lauded, those those are the types of games you want to highlight because yeah. that t tells people, hey. You get like these things. You've heard of this. You have an association. If Horizon Zero Dawn comes on PS Plus, mm -hmm. which I'm sure they're still ma actually considering, probably still making sales. But uh, like at some point, yeah, that that should be a PS Plus game, because that that's a game that if I didn't get around to playing and I found out I got it for free, or for like if I just re up my subscription for the 15 quid, I would of course do that. Yeah, yeah, completely. And uh, and know, then I you could... can take it away after the month if I don't finish it, right? Like. It's better than than fire sailing it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like, I completely if, agree. From yeah. a capitalistic point of view, like don't fire sail it. Put it on PS Plus. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, and, and I think something like Horizon would, you know, three or four months out from whenever a sequel may or you know would would release one done. That would that would be perfect. You know, put it out like just before a release get yep. people hyped up for it again what people may have sold their copy you know if they yep. had a physical copy they may have traded it in or gone or uh I, know. humble humble monthly gave me the division with the survival expansion mm. um a month within the past two months yeah and that made total yeah. sense i'm like i see why you're doing that same thing with oh no i think i had i can't remember when humble gave me hitman but it was around like the full first season it was around we, uh, completely because we just got hitman to well, so we just got the first season of Hitman on PlayStation Plus last month. Yeah, be, yeah, because Hitman Two came out in what November. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it yeah. spike, spike yeah. the second sale. So it must have spiked. So, so exactly. you, either you 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 like use it as a hype build, or once the initial spike dropped and you're starting to go down, you just stop that plummet by mm -hmm. giving it away, and maybe people buy the second. Exactly. One. And yeah. uh, for anyone who has downloaded um, Hitman Season One. But hasn't pulled the trigger on season two yet. You can now download the first. You can download the first uh, uh, map, essentially the first mission for Hitman season two for free. And what you can then do is go into the game and download because you own Hitman season one through PlayStation Plus. You can then download the legacy pack right in Hitman two, which is the and you can new play engine. and you can play all of season one. With the upgraded engine and all of the new options that it allows. I, st I own Hitman 1 twice on <laughs> the PC. <laughs> Everywhere. Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I only own it on PC and then, like, uh, I gave away the code. And I'm part of a Facebook group which does Free Games Friday. Okay. I was like, oh, shit, people might want this. Take this code. Mm. Nice. Because um, Out of Lives has... A we're really bad about we're talking about how would it be good to give codes away. And then I think the one time we tried it here on this show was like two years ago and then we faffed about for a while and I think we gave a we game We definitely away. gave a game away. I just like, don't I remember no what idea. it was. I think no, it was like, oh, it no turns clue. out the game we thought would be like a slam dunk that person owned already. So it was like, ah, uh, well, here's seven games that you may have heard of. Pick <laughs> ah, one. That's right. Yes, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so We good at this. <laughs> um, it, it kind of like, you know, the, the game I've been playing is, is uh, Modern Warfare, Call of Duty. Oh. And it's kind of like really built me back into it. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you're getting better. Yeah, game I mean, two think... is better than game one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it kind of it, it just it just pushes me more for that like you know that quality. Even this this is a game that what Modern Warfare Remastered came out two years ago now or eighteen months ago something like that. Yes, I am. Um, with Infinity Warfare. Yeah, Infinite Warfare. Infinite Warfare. I keep, yeah. so, I keep saying Infinity it's, two, it, War, it, it's, it's definitely not. two years ago because Call of Duty, World War, or whatever was last. The last. Oh, we had Call Black Ops, and oh, then was well, three War. years ago, and then no, no, no. So it must be three years. Yeah, ago. I was going to say yeah because it, it was Blops, World War. So Infinite. a remaster of like a what ten year old game, a PlayStation Three game. That's a great pun. Hey, Sorry, Lucy is coming to join us in a moment. But she said 15 minutes from hopping on. Hey. And that, that's the fun. Do we crack another beer before? 15 minutes? Yeah. I'll... <laughs> what is wrong with you? Uh, I'll just finish. So. Uh, oh, yeah. I, no, I've, got another, I've got another point. So, um, Did you finish the last one or are you just moving to the. No, no, no. I'll, fin I'll finish this part okay. and then I'll move on to the extra, the, the, the rest of the bit I want to say. So, Modern Warfare, is... um, it, it's got me back into this game. Yeah. Which I I really enjoy. 
Yeah. Pacing is exactly what I want from a Call of Duty game. And suddenly I'm invested again. You know, Blackout yeah. 4, the trial from... Uh, uh, not Blackout 4. Uh, uh, Black Ops 4. Yeah, Black Ops 4. The Blackout trial I just didn't get into. But Modern Warfare, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm, yeah. You know, this is what I'm going to play until the Division 2 comes out. So Absolutely like no week. doubt. Yeah, only for a week, yeah. sure. But, but having said that, though, if you're I mean, not, if you, if no one's around to play say, Division Two, I'll jump. But on also, to, like, to it, it scratches a different itch. It does, yeah. Because, like, I, I mean, one. Of, I'm, to be honest, one of the problems was like, I, I'm, uh, I'm still like loosey goosey on on controllers. But also, I realized when, I, like, in that second round, I'm like, oh, my awareness is is mapped to AI's being like not like so like the way for the range in which I so I have this idea I can be out in the open from far away yeah uh, yeah because yeah. because like I just realized that's how I was playing because like you don't get sniped by AI in these games yep and so like in my head I was like it's been so long since I've played a multiplayer FPS that I just was like what and then I got pegged and I was like what happened Oh, of course. That's a human being who <laughs> is trying to kill me from as far away as possible. Obviously, if I just sort of awkwardly run between two vehicles, I'm gonna die. <laughs> um, but I, I, I had that realization. Be like, oh, and then like the and the division, I can do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the game I've been playing most. Which may change, kind of like when we jump into like PvP and Dark Zone. And well, things I was like gonna that. say, like, so until yeah. until we sort of level up a bit, or or, or maybe the maybe the scaling of the Dark Zone will work really well. I, I think you'll probably still go back to something like Modern Warfare because mm. it's a different itch. Is the point of starting. yeah, and, and so I kind of like yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the other game I played, uh, which I might talk about next week as my topic, um, because I'm really enjoying it, is Slime Rancher. Oh, Which, I super enjoy. I, I, I mm. when it first came out, I like read some reviews. I'm like, I think I'm gonna want to play this. But I've, I, so it's currently free on on Epic. I don't have my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I think oh, uh, Epic are doing a very good job curating. of curating a free game every two weeks. You haven't got to pay for it. Yeah, it, it is getting me. To open up Epic Launcher, just to see, to go on and go, go on the store and be like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And I, I played Subnautica, I played Axe in Verge, I played Slime Rancher. I, like, I, already... Um, I already own Thimbleweed Park, which I played, which was last couple of weeks. Game, so I, I think. I, obviously, the dissertation maybe lose the loop mm. from Christmas, um, but like, I had Subnautica on a different platform. Sure. I had Super Meat Boy on a different platform, and then oh, I was like. Yes. I was like, Aah. and then I, I literally lost touch with that. So I didn't realize that those all those games were like I didn't. So when they announced that they were like we're going to give away, away every game every couple of weeks through January. So mm. the way they said it, it was like it seemed it might be like a limited time. Yeah, thing and there, so yeah. I didn't even think about it until yeah. you said this, and then you said like three more excellent games, not all of which I own on any platform. Mm. So yeah, that's super interesting, it, it, and and it, it gets me onto the store. Yeah, I mean that's exactly what. You and mean. I'm looking through. I'm not. I haven't bought anything. You will, but I may do. And by that, I, 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 by that I mean like something. Will, at some point, you'll probably buy a thing. And they've all got... the on every platform that I have. That, like the same thing happened with me to me on Origin. They used mm. to give a free game away. Oh yeah. Or randomly, you could just they open Origin. That? I don't know. I don't fucking open Origin. But like I own like the Saboteur was for sale. Oh, yeah. Uh, like donkeys years ago for like dirt cheap, and I was like. I was in there. I saw. I saw. I got the free game, and then I went to what's on sale. I'm like, oh, I heard that was a uh, kind of clunky but really interesting um, premise and artistic approach to an open world. Like, so you're not yet uh, occup occupied Paris, and as you free the neighborhoods, they go from black and white to color. Yeah, and I was like. Uh, it's worth five dollars for me just to see how well this aesthetic move is pulled. Like, mm. I don't actually care if the plot's crap; it's kind of crap. Um, but like the the fact that like when you're fighting, it's in black and white, and when you go back to where the fight was, it's not. It's that's super just, cool, it, it, cool, and it, it's yeah. really well done. Like it's reason. Like I, I I played a very small amount but yeah. on a friend's game because yeah. he was playing it when we appeared at his house. Yeah. Uh, you know, competent open world game. Yeah, yeah. It's from that era of like. Open world means GTA clones, so yeah. like, you need cars and you need to be in the city. What, GTA, Winter Saboteur set in the 
World the twenties, the twenties, or forties. I mean, it's, it's World War Two. There's not so no 40s, Nazis. Yeah, forties. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I said thirties. You said twenties. I'm a kid. Like sometime. Well, I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it doesn't it's around then. But so, uh, you know, a slightly different approach. Uh, you know, epic giving away a free game to draw people to open up the launcher and to get them onto the yeah. store and to make people you know, to keep them in the space. I suppose well, I you know, PlayStation are changing tack to go. Okay, these these you know we're 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 no longer supporting these kind of systems anymore. Yeah, and actually, what that means we can do is rather than giving money to five people, six developers, oh, yeah. we can now give money to two developers, and, and we can and, you know and we can give more of that money. You know, yeah, we can get the that higher for, caliber game exactly. Um, the the uh, but the other thing I think that's very different is a PC platform is functionally and fundamentally different from a console platform sure. because there's no reason I need to go need your service except if I want to buy a game True. versus I would like to play a game with yeah, a friend yeah. I would like to fucking play the goddamn beta mm -hmm. to a game like I got a code for the division 2 beta yeah. and I and I had to use my um European account because it was a European beta key, mm -hmm. um, so by that I mean I have an account that's just for like random keys that are European based because you can't change your fucking location country yeah. in 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 place PSN. But I then had to sign up for that one week or two week trial mm. of PS Plus to play a beta, which is insane. Like <laughs> the company wants me to play this because they're doing testing and I am a tester. Yeah. Now I have to. If I didn't have access to a two-week trial on that account, I would have had to pay mm. for Ubisoft to do and me to have the transaction we already agreed we wanted to have. It's just nonsense. Well, Ep yeah. Ep Epic can't doesn't have that move. So, like, I think fundamentally, like, giving good games is the add-on. But what really drives PS Plus is I want to play games. Sure. With friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely. with Epic, yeah. it's like I need to get you in my store because you have no other reason to come to my store it, it would be interesting to see the, uh, the 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 split the statistics on uh playstation plus you know people who are paying for it because they want to play games with their friends and people yeah. who are paying for it because they want that the games the games yeah well it, it turns out a lot of people don't play multiplayer games yeah we just apparently the industry doesn't care because that bow royale bow royale bow royale yeah that's the Battle Royale Falcon for you all this week. Yeah, that's um, uh, if you go to tank tap or out of lives dot net slash ringtones, you can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got there. It wasn't <laughs> worth it. The beer we're drinking. Shit, yeah, they're vibrant stone. We've packs of beer. Uh, vibrant forest stone sap. Yes, yeah. juicy India pale ale. Uh, there's there's a little bit of flavour text. So for this juicy IPA, we threw an abundance of Citra and Simcoe hops into a very oat heavy brew hmm. and this is the result pineapple orange and mango dominate the aroma whilst juicy wait sorry it's because it's all in one line so sorry they dominate the aroma they dominate the aroma whilst the juicy apricot mandarin and ripe mango tackle the palate gooey uh. sappy flavors blends with this ripened soup ending in a thick slightly bittered fruity finish Ah, some some more ground that could have been <laughs> put in there. It sounds like they forgot commas. Uh, I mean, yeah, well, six point eight percent. I mean, ground, the, the commas exist, but they're so fucking small, oh, and okay. they're blue on blue. So six point eight percent. It's a juicy IPA from Vibrant Forest. There it is. Hooray! Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I was Where's Vibrant say... Forest from? Oh, they're not. They uh, are anyway. from... I don't remember. We've had a few bits from them, but I don't remember where they're from. <laughs> Unit 3, Gordleton, Gordle, Gordleton Industrial Park in Lymington, Hans. Lymington. Lymington? Yeah, that makes more sense. Mm. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I... I definitely, when I read a place name in, in the UK, don't get it right the first time. <laughs> because English is stupid. Yeah. Um, well, also, like, the... Like, the 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 language and like the the ways people pronounce things I sort of oh, know. normally I get like I understand oh I would say it this way you don't but like 
place names are so fucked up here, and yeah. there, there's such a variance Very in like things, yeah. and 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 so because of that, it's like actually like if if that place was over there, I think it would be like <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. More than likely, yeah, well, yeah. No, 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 completely. completely. Yeah. Um, so. I was going to, but before yeah. I read that, I was getting a lot of mango on the taste. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm kind of on the nose. The nose is, the... so from that comma spliced disaster of <laughs> flavors text, um, I was expecting a huge nose of tropical. And the sure. nose is quite understated. Yeah, yeah, it's really It's light. there. It's got a little bit of citrus, I want to say. Hmm? Like there's a little bit of uh, of the bitter comes off uh, on the nose. Uh, do they say Citra and Simcoe? In the Simcoe, hops? yeah, makes sense. Um. I'm getting a little bit of ma mango slash just generic tropical fruit. I mean, on the nose. it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because it, it, they say pineapple on the nose. It's and not there. It's no, pineapple just, is a distinct tropical fruit. You, yeah, completely. And you just I don't there. know whether it just kind of it it, it gets overshadowed so much by the other flavors mm. that it just ends up being like a, a backup kind of uh, you know smell that's like oh yeah it's tropical fruit because it's this fruit and something mm. else that i can't quite <coughs> can't quite Excuse work me. out uh whereas you know yes a little little bit of apricot but that's really light like on the on, on the, the nose on, or no, the, on the flavor okay, on the flavor like really light and it's got this very oh um, I, I mean yeah it's definitely stone fruit mm. it's definitely more apricot than something else i yeah. think it's it's the first thing that hits you but it doesn't last yes completely and so it's mango definitely then, there that mango yeah. then kicks in and it then just, just it's really, um, I don't know the best word to describe it, but like the word, I don't think it is, but the word dull comes into my mind about the bitterness. Like it kind of, kind of, the bitterness kind of kicks in, but it's really light. I it's understated. kind of there. Yeah, maybe understated. But no, I think, I think dull is probably the right term because it's, it, it's, it's understated sometimes means it's fulfilling the role and this feels dull in the sense of it's like, Oh, there. Yeah, like it's, it's there, there, but it's yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not doing what I thought. It's definitely not doing the standard thing mm. f for IPAs. Mm. It's, it's 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 too not subtle, not understated. It's just too weak. Completely. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and but what's interesting is I'm noticing how bitter it actually is. Having when everything else faded. So like, yes, like yeah. 45 seconds after a sip, you're like, oh, actually. Like there's still a bitterness in yeah. my mouth, and that's but, what remains. Yeah, yeah. And then, but like all the other stuff is sort of fighting against mm -hmm. that. So it's I don't even like. Normally, you don't take these long breaks, yeah. and then you're like, oh, actually, there's a lot more happening in this sort of bitterness area than I realized. But I had to wait for the muddled soup to wear off to even realize that, that was happening at in any degree. Completely, like, I, mean, I think it's just masking mm. the flavors are fighting against each other not a little a little and it does together. have that slightly ot sort of creaminess oh yeah so the viscosity well, is there like, yeah, yeah 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 um but i get no I just, mandarin though it's it's an, it's no i don't either and it's an odd one because i you know i think the first beer i had from these guys oh. was like was fine um it was a uh i think it was a stout but like an imperial stout i think i got really big alcohol from it and that was kind of about it. There's a huge sweetness to it. Saying, I wasn't. I think an imperial stout shouldn't. I well, mean, I think it was only should two, hit was you only, hard. So but. there was only two beers, I think, from uh, Vibrant Forest in the bottle shop when I first encountered them, and both mm. of them were stouts. Uh, so was I, that a chance encounter? Uh, no, sorry. Um, but I then had. Um, uh, I think it was an IPA from them called Pupa, or something similar. Mm. Really good. Yeah. Really nice beer. And then this one's come along, and it's kind of a bit like. Meh. Okay, can I it's fine. The, it's the, all right. It's it's yeah, okay. You know, I mean, I have it's not to, it's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad beer, but it's not kind of doing I, much. Yeah, it's trying to do something. I, but I, it doesn't quite work together to maybe do what they want. I'm super confused. So normally, like rereading the flavor text guides me in a way that's like might be confirmation bias. Sure. And here, it's just like nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, it's not a terrible tasting thing, but like, um, I don't think it's out heavy. It's not out heavy, no. no. Um, I, I don't think, it's a, a, pineapple, orange, and mango dominate the aroma? No. No. Um, like, there's no pineapple. Again, mango-y. There's a little bit of mango, but there's no orange. Um, and then, then, whilst juicy apricot, mandarin, um and ripe mango tackle the palate and i'm like 
I, 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 yeah, apricot a little. <laughs> not really. The man, like I think the like tropical fruit is only lightly there in the nose. I'm not really mm. getting it there. And mandarin is such a specific thing. Yeah. Compared to orange, and that's just not there either. I, I like. I guess the weird thing is that through the aroma and the taste, I'm just not getting a lot of orangeiness. And they're like they're citing two different modes of orange. Yeah. It's yeah. just like so. I'm confused, right? Um, I mean, uh, to I mean, I've only got a very small amount left, but to the people kind of um, watching, it's a very similar color to the the cloud boy. A little bit lighter. Like, it's, it's, it's not like quite more as... yellow, but it's just as translucent yeah. or yeah. non-translucent. Doesn't quite have that ambery, orangey yeah. sort of center to it, does it? And I, so, so as you can see with mine, there's like no head as well. It, mm. it also tastes sort of more flat than the. the yes, last very one. much. Yeah, which is not a problem. I'm just saying, like, it, yeah. Um, I guess. I want more of what's going on when everything else but the finish, like w w everything fades away, and all we're left is this interesting hoppy finish. And I'm like, mm. I wonder what's going on under the hood before. That's all I can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's it's like oh, there could be something really interesting. You kind of want what you're getting right at the end. To, to, uh, from to, the start to kind of, or, or at least a better kind of like. Well, so like leading. one one is like it's a little muddled uh, in general yeah. um, and that that's sort of unfortunate so it's like oh well when everything else fades away I get some clarity but the other is this is an interesting finish like these hops are doing something that, that is quite tasty and noticeable mm -hmm. and I want to know where that started versus only knowing where it finished so it's like not only is it muddled versus clarity but also this is super interesting and I can't tell where it started yeah, yeah, completely. So, so beer of the night. <sighs> beer number two. Um, oh, uh, we're going to take a short break because Lucy's here. And we'll re re reappear in a moment. And you know, she's going to be like, we're going to say, yes, but we're pausing. She's like, oh, it's not ready. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Lucy's going to tell us about her, her beer right after that. I don't know why I said that afterwards. It ruins the <laughs> transition. Right. Oh, oh no! Oh, it was Kim. Hey! Oh, hey. oh she's back! Jesus Christ! Hey! Uh -oh. Hey! Yes! Oh, cameo! Cameo! Hey. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cameo I wanted. I wanted either Jurian. Or you haven't locked the front Evelyn door. Or no. Kim. I think we didn't lock the front door. I think. No, I did. I did. <laughs> oh, you're just gonna go and lock the front door. <laughs> now you can actually now Ben's gone, so you can actually listen to Lucy. Yes. Oh, hey. Hi, hey. Kim. I got a guy. No. Hey. No, I'm here. No, this no, is. No, get rid of Ben. Okay. Lucy says Bye, get rid of Ben. ben. Bye, get... Ben. <laughs> We're gonna Ben's, record I don't, this I don't podcast think Ben's happy. Kim, do you care about Resident Evil Two? Um, I haven't that. actually watched it. Um, <laughs> all I care about is not the um, film, the game. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it. <laughs> but it's not okay. He's fine. What's not okay? Um, not also, no, I'm no, apparently no. on the prosecco as well in this beer oh, podcast. Shit, what, what, this what is we, honestly the funniest podcast I've recorded. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm no assuming we're on the this. <laughs> Let's go with the wicked weed, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Okay, we're uh, on the podcast. Uh, no, she hasn't uh, hit record uh, yet. Oh, have you not? Yeah, yeah. So, um, we interrupted that podcast that we were doing for because we have been joined by not only Lucy but Kim. Yeah. Hey. Which if Special you are hits. watching the video version you'll suddenly see ah. the frames change entirely and two more bodies <laughs> yeah. appear. But if you're just listening, there are two voices. Yeah. Um and also it's been about a half an hour and uh, there's <laughs> prosecco as as well as beer. Yeah, we finished uh, that last beer, so we're going to have another <laughs> beer. Oh, and well. I think I think Kim has lost her earphone. Um oh, shit. But, um, Lucy, can you tell us what you are drinking? I am drinking um, an APA American Ale Ale. Oh, I thought it was the American um, Psychological Association. Yes, Mr. Drinking, Degree. You are drinking um, an association. <laughs> I am. And it's from I Notting Hill. Lucy. <laughs> I love Lucy. I love Wait. I think, who doesn't love Lucy? It's true. Basically, I think so. Yeah, listeners, can we get the can we get from... the hashtag trending? We love Lucy. <laughs> no, because everyone would show? be transported back to the seventies then. Yeah. Like... That's I love Lucy. Yeah. So it's a yeah. play on that. I love Lucy hashtag. 
I love mm. Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Notting anyway. Hill American Pale Ale. It's 4.7%. Um, it's from Moncada Brewery. 4.7%? Who... Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, 4.7%. Yeah, it's, it's light. We're saying it's nothing, mate. I don't know. Compared to the 13% Prosecco? Of course it is. Is it uh, or, or the twelve percent beer that we're about to drink? Oh, jeez! <laughs> um, <laughs> it's from Moncada Brewery. Um, basically, they're going to have a. Uh, by the time this podcast goes up, hopefully, if no one's hung over, um, uh, it's going to be craft beer hour for them on oh, Tuesday. Right. On Tuesday, okay. so awesome. yeah, I got a special deal uh, where you could get six of their beers. I think I've only had probably like one of their beers in the past can't even remember which one it was but um yeah you could get a few of their beers for a discounted price so i jumped on that and this is just one of them 4.7 percent um apa uh let me see what it has in it mm. contains water, water barley oats yeah. hops mm. and yeast like we couldn't Shut tell up. that already the, hops? I need, I jump the hops makes things hey, all right, okay. this is oh, getting dear. a bit blue. Yeah, I was going to say. The watershed. <laughs> Jeez. This is definitely after the watershed. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I, it, I'm just going to remind you guys, I'm nice. still in the room. <laughs> was, she was, she also, was, there are cameras and okay, recording yeah, equipment. Apparently, it's fine. Yeah, it's right. We haven't, we haven't so... kicked into my multi-camera setup yet. So oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know why I brought that up. Uh, okay. Hey, Lucy yeah. is okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. hold up. Lucy, Lucy, say something. Go, go. Thank you, Kim. As an thank APA, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just malty, slightly hoppy. It's there's malty. not much going on. I heard. I've got um, <laughs> there's not much going on. Uh, there's an echo going on. There must be the game. Much going on. It's, just it's, that right it's, there. it's pleasant Stop. to drink, but um, yeah, that's about, <laughs> about it. It's it, what you can expect from an APA. Like, Hang on. What's oh, going on? Mate. Yeah, not, honestly, it's not because we've been completely derailed. It's just that there's not enough to go on to so, so, buy anything so, else. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. She was. He was asking a question. Yeah, no, no honestly, yeah, there's no. not much more to go on. It's malty. It's hoppy. It's, it's hoppy. <laughs> 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 um so is it is it is it one of those things where it it's not doing anything wrong but it's just doing what it's supposed to do absolutely, in a kind of boring absolutely. Way? Well, yeah it's 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 yeah. run in the mill it's very yeah. standard there's not much going on this is probably very much one of the like you know probably i'm not too familiar with this brewery but it's probably one of their staple brews where it's like mm. We're going to use as least hops and least like malts, uh, yeast, and all that kind of stuff, and just make a you know serviceable, serviceable beer, and that's probably what this is. I've got a few more from them. They've got an imperial stout. They've got a blonde ale. They've got they've got a sour. So I'll be probably sharing my impressions of those like next week. Um, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. For now, you're, you're going to wait for Tuesday. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, but um, cool. for now, this is just like standard run of the mill. It's not nice. It's not good, it's not good, it's not nice, it's not nice, not good, not bad, not not perfect, not whatever. It's, kind of, it's not anything. It's, okay. it's, okay. it's not anything. It's a it's a beer it's standard. Of unremarkable <laughs> yeah. no. You can't say this is fantastic, you can't right. say this is bad, mm, you can't say yeah. this is not nice, you can't say this is not terrible. Yeah, it's just standard. Yeah. There's not which, much. Which to say it about could it. be worse. Oh god, yeah. But much it could worse. be better. Uh as a I'm guessing this is just a staple beer from them yeah. maybe not too much better it depends what sort of ingredients that they have but yeah it's good so we are moving on to i just realized it said oh. it's not nice several times i uh, uh, yeah you did that's why I yeah was don't like... yeah yeah sorry i'm, I'm more drink than yeah that's fine <laughs> i don't know about that no it's um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. not yeah. unnice yeah. i should say yeah, yeah. it's very it's um, very it's very serviceable it's not it's serviceable. not fantastic yeah, but yeah fair enough um we are about to crack open the Dark Age Bourbon Barrel Aged Imperial Stout from Wicked Weed Brewing. 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 Oh, Brewing. Um, it is. Um, we got it from the uh, Bottles and Books Bottle Shop in oh, Bristol. That's, that's impressive. It's um yeah, and it's uh from North Carolina. 
And I will read the flavor text. Humanity's path out of the Dark Age is one without end. This path carries us from the mystical to the measurable, from the magical to the mathematical, and serves as a meandering tale of progress from madness to method. Yet we still find wonder in the magical and excitement in the mystery. From this yearning for the old ways, Dark Age Imperial Stout emerges from the whiskey barrel. Its dark malt complexity and smooth sweetness, softened by its evolution in the oak, a living testament to the marriage of method and mystery. Y okay. You sounded like a late 80s, early oh, 90s, so it like, like, read, oh. like film, like, um, you, you know, like the film Yeah, yeah like, just, Mr. Announcer? Like, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You sound like, maybe you should yeah. do that. Oh. Yeah. That 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 was that was what I was aiming for. That was good. I'm um, also <laughs> hilariously because it's the the states have different like deposit schemes. I'm gonna hold this up to the camera, but like this is nonsense. It's literally a bunch of state names and then five cents and then another bunch of state <laughs> names and then ten cents. It's like C T I A M E M A V T. Hey, ten cents. It's more than we get. Yeah. We um, get that's true. shit all. Yeah, um, it, is, okay. it is also... Um, you get kudos, Lucy. Kudos for your recycling. We don't even get that because kudos. I don't even have anywhere to recycle anymore. <laughs> like, outside of my own bins. They got rid of all the recycling places. Really? really? Local yeah, it's like you can't find any. everyone has any. local, right? Yeah, yeah but it's like, we've been idea. like 20 miles. Yeah. Find somewhere to like donate your clothes or anything. <laughs> like, what's going on? Um, and also, I think in all of that flavor text, it wasn't clear that it's a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout and it's 12%. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a big one. But yeah, it, no. that's really impressive that. Um, uh, they, Bottles they and Books got a North get... Carolina one? Yeah. yeah. Like, mm. Wicked Weed are like, notoriously, well, not o uh, only based in America, like, just hard to get over here. So, yeah, I don't think I've ever had Wicked Weed beer, so that's pretty impressive. Are you done? <laughs> yeah, the boringness. <laughs> you like? I don't want to. I don't want to listen to all of these beer talks. Yeah, she she's bored already. Like, yeah. God. <laughs> um, I she think just wants a, prosecco. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Do you, oh, smell that! Oh wow, that's got leather in it. Tannins, yeah? all the tannins. It's got yeah, but it also has this like leatheriness. Oh. You okay? How do I get inside? Are you off? Oh. All right. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> we'll pause for a second. We bored her to death. Yeah. Uh, you see, we're far less interesting than Prosecco. Yeah. I, I, I told her. I you <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably good. Yeah. I mean, take, yeah, take the bottle of Prosecco anyway, how? because how? I should how? go in. It's all right. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> the deal. How, how's that? Um... You said leather. And... Ben said right? tannins. Yeah, uh, yeah. You okay, said leather, um, and Ben said tannins. Is, has it got like that kind of white, vinous like kind of quality? It's got a bit of a, or... yeah. It's got a, 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 a bit of a whiny thing. Um, mostly the, mm. the the leatheriness is like that. It's like an aged leather. Like it just has that like yeah, like that a bit of a musty, but yeah, like leather bound sort of note to it um, like it feels like it's been aged a bit or, or... yeah almost almost like it was aged in bur bourbon barrel aged yeah um, cats but what why i nice. wanted to point that out was because like bourbon is is whiskey that is made in bourbon county but um yep. also in it needs to be in um new oak barrels okay um, so the barrels you age bourbon in have to be completely new new wood oh yes the bourbon i was, th yeah, I was thinking yeah. of like the beer yeah, asian yeah, bourbon yeah. Like, I know so so oh, okay. because of that like the wood isn't giving any notes and, mm -hmm. but it's also not taking like there's an absorption and like give back thing while like sink like scotches are need to be in reused barrels and they get the notes of whatever you like, yeah so, like a sherry absolutely casked um scotch gets a lot of that fruit from back from the wood that it took from the sherry yeah um and so why i think sort of like that so i'm sort of surprised given that it's also sort of single use barrels that they've put they, they've used that you're getting a lot from it anyway so mm. like usually when i think bourbon barreled i think like well there's going to be like a, a bit of a fiery taste to it from the bourbon but not a lot of like subtle notes because 
the wood itself just hasn't been exposed to a lot. Yeah. And so, like, this leatheriness thing is like an aged note that I didn't expect. Yeah. Be because of the barrels that they used. Like, I would have expected that you could get that from maybe something else, but it's... Um, mm. um, it has that sweetness that you would expect on a 12% uh, beer. Yeah. Um, it, it's, the alcohol uh, and the malts yeah. and everything. Yeah, it sounds like a really complex bit. Like, oh. it's really good. Yeah, um, it's wetter. I thought it'd be a bit, a bit more like velvety or viscousy. Mm. And it's actually quite thin. Okay, so like, it doesn't like, taste like twelve like percent at all. Oh, not at all. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, the malts are in full force, as you expect mm. from a, a quality stout. Um, I'm actually so the bourboniness mm. um the and the alcohol content only really start to show when everything else has faded away you get that like kind of warming sensation or... um, it's more of like that there's enough going on that you don't notice how quite how sweet things are until the other things fade away and then you're right, like, oh, okay. that sweetness is there yeah. because it's alcoholic yeah but like most of the taste profile is there's so much going on you don't notice that how strong mm. that sweetness is and it's only when like the malts start to fade this like robust stoutiness has done its thing and then you're like oh there's still sweet li lingering oh mm. it's because this is fucking 12 <laughs> percent yeah. but i i i mean i think it's impossible to mask something that strong um completely yeah completely yeah, and so yeah. it, the fact that i don't didn't notice it until like mm -hmm. everything else sort of had run its course is impressive um it's yeah. like oh yep i get that it, and it's also good because sometimes like when you get like a nine or ten percent beer that doesn't taste like it it's kind of problematic mm -hmm. because you can't track that <laughs> sometimes oh yeah and problematic in terms of if you're gonna wake up with a, hang a hangover the next day yeah certainly um yeah because yeah, i had a I only had a taste of a cloud water. Uh, it was a stout, it was imperial stout the other day, and it was aged in red wine barrels. Um, mm. Just immediately from the the aroma, you could tell it was like very vinous in quality. And right. Yeah, it was very sweet tasting. Like I'm not a, much of a wine drinker, but you could you could definitely tell there was like sweetness from the fruit of the right. berries and the wine. And it didn't taste like 11% at all, at all whatsoever. But you still had that, like, kind of, not burning, but that warming sensation, like, a few right, yeah, a few yeah. seconds after. So warmth. that was an it's indication. Like, yeah. yeah, the warmth. So you, the indication It's like, oh, maybe it's time to stop drinking. But I think brewers nowadays have just got so much better at disguising yeah. that... Um, that, that ABV and yeah. I did speak to... Uh, who, who was it? I think... I can't remember who it was, but... It was someone where I was at a um, like tap to takeover, and they were just like, um, "Oh yeah, we, we we've been able to disguise this ABV just from the um, just from the hops." Really, they've been able to do it from the hops itself. So, yeah, I'm not a brewer. I don't know how they do this voodoo magic. Oh stuff. shit! Sorry, yeah. I was trying to close the door, and I lost the earphone. Yes, yeah, all right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. It's the magic. Magic it's, it's just, like, <laughs> It turns out that some people are more refined at the magic than others. Yeah. But and sometimes like, it's, a, it's a creative choice whether they want to disguise that, yeah, that and um, I, ABV or not. Yeah, yeah, and I think that... Um, so... I, I think... I can't remember what it was, but in the past few weeks, we've had a stout or... Um, I think it was a stout. It might have been a porter that was low percentage. And we were yeah, like, it was the Korean one, wasn't it? The um, yeah, and it was like uh, I actually have it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I a have brown no problem. Wild wave brown 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 porter. Yeah, and it was like yeah. I I think and this is just my opinion. That, like I think that these um, like porters and stouts need to be high percentage because like mm. that because a huge part of that taste profile is that like marrying the sweetness that comes with the high abv with yeah. the rest of the taste and so that the heft isn't just sort of 
well, I'm used to these multi flavors or whatever, it's also like the impact and the sweetness. And so when you cut the ABV down, something goes awry. And then by that, I don't yeah, mean, um... why have you put rye in this thing? I mean, <laughs> um, but like, and, and, and so like, I just generally have, I've never met a um, low ABV stout or porter that may, that quite work because, and I don't think it's like, mm. no, I think it needs to be like in your face. It's just, you need to somehow, like, if you're going to do a low ABV thing, you need to give that sweetness some, yeah. from somewhere. And it, I haven't really found one that has done that yet. I mean, I mean, like, porters are meant to be lower strength. Um, yeah. So, I expect from them, but like stouts, as you say, like when I do get like a lower percent stout or a stout where it's like, even if it's like, so you know, a higher percent, if it's like quite thin and like it has to have basically, it should have like a couple of tenets to it. It's like, yeah, I expect coffee flavor, I expect roasted malt. Even if I don't expect it to be like thick and creamy and f you know like full bodied, I expect it to at least be have quite a coffee or chocolate like yeah. flavor and stuff like that. So there's different things I expect from it. So if it's like it doesn't feel like any of those tenets, then fair enough. But it's like if I have a I don't know if if I see a stout that's like four point seven percent, let's just yeah. say. But it's very coffee-ish and it's very oh, yeah fully the, the, yeah. yeah then uh, yeah. it does what i'm expecting it to sure i'd prefer maybe an imperial style or a style that's like seven percent that's full-bodied etc but uh, yeah i'm I guess, always beholden to all yeah. those um i guess I, I guess my i what i was trying to get at was mm -hmm. it wasn't that it needs to be high abv but like something mm. about the notion of these types of beers is the sweetness that normally is yeah. contributed by the ABV, and so if you're trading that away, you have to you have to trade it. Like you have to, like if you have all these like interesting coffee roasted malted flavors, that's good. But you like at least for me, it seems like when it doesn't have something else on the sweetness side, it doesn't feel like the right mm. like like the type of beer seems to need that sweetness in a way that other beers yeah. don't and so when you haven't satisfied that that like i guess it's it's a necessary but not sufficient condition for a, a, a stout is i yeah. think there needs to be a notion of sweetness and the easiest way to do that is just abv because that's the natural way but when you trade away the abv you have to be cognizant of like uh everything else that's what's going, going on, on yeah. yeah the balance mm. is thrown off it's like what where does it come point where you're just making a completely different style? So, yeah, yeah absolutely. But I also recognize fun. that might that m maybe other people don't think that they need to have that sweetness. But I, 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 I feel like it's a necessary but not sufficient condition. Yeah, uh, and that's that's uh, fine. It's like, yeah, yeah, certain things. It's like if you expect like a New England IPA, I expect it to be hazy. God damn it! So mm. <laughs> there you go. Mm. But even if I had it, I'm um, hazy. So We've talked a lot about this beer, but Ben wasn't here, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on the Dark Age. Yeah. Especially because you have no idea what we talked about, except that. No, I kind of sort of like rambling about styles and things yeah, yeah. rather than the, the, the Burner yeah. and, and we, we brought the conversation back down to the room. Yeah. To, to um, how should I say, refined conversation. No. Mm, yeah. Even it never is on this fucking. Um. <laughs> um hasn't got a huge amount in the nose. It really doesn't. Unless you get your nose, like, right in. Like, stick it right in. I mean, no, so so I think actually part of the leatheriness is in the nose. And by that I mean, when I say leatheriness, I mostly mean, like, this, like, aged... Yeah, like, like a little bit of oakiness. Uh, yeah. The tannins are kind of, like, kicking through. It's got a little bit of a sweetness, like a, of a, a bit of a port, almost, yeah. to it. Whether that's just the barrel aging process, whether it's a red winey or a porty kind of, or it's just because it's fucking twelve percent, might just be. But it's a a bourbon. That's a bourbon barrel aged. Not yeah. getting that much on the nose, though. But it's in the flavour. Like you got that sweetness. Yeah, immediately, right? Yeah, straight away. Yeah. There's a slight 
a slight smokiness. Do you get smoke? Slight, after this? yeah, yeah, really, really light. But that 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 sweetness, that kind of that almost that, uh, and it, it is it is like a port sweetness. It is it is edging on that kind. Oh, of... Oh yeah, and I think it's because way. it's just high ABV. Like I think that's where mm. the sweetness is. Yeah, coming completely. From. But it's um, you know I'm slightly not... slightly buried. But uh, I'm not getting a smokiness, but I, I think I know what you are, like, referring to. I think I'm picking up what you're putting down, but I don't think it's necessarily smoky. Mm. Um, it's kind of like, as the, as that initial flavor kind of dissipates, Yeah, it kind of, something edges in just behind yeah, and everything. I, I don't think it's smoke necessarily. <laughs> I think it's like, um trying to figure out what that is i i get what you're pointing at and um yeah so yeah i definitely there's get something those, there there is there, something else I get, kind I, of like I, so it's like the berries are doing their thing this is doing a thing mm. this makes a very interesting beer but i don't think it's smoky sure. especially given that we had that odyssey earlier today where like oh yes yeah it's like, not it's, it's, it's not, not smoky no, I, th no, no, I think no, no, it's no, no. an aged thing maybe maybe so I think it's I maybe think it's, it's more a, sort of like a woody I, maybe so a more oaky it, kind of I think this is I think when you are saying smoky and I'm saying sort of leathery but not really leathery I think we're maybe talking about the same narrowing sort of thing. on yeah, the same yeah, idea yeah. of just like maybe like this, a, more, a, a more oaky sort of well yeah this like what? sort of sweaty old. <laughs> a little musty, but not mm -hmm. like musty. Dank. Musty. musty, but not dank. Not dank. Yeah. not dank, not dank, but, but maybe musty. musty. Yeah, and I think yeah. when I'm saying the Shuffly. one, Shuffly. that's a good, that's a good yeah. word. Shuffly, yeah. Old people. Yeah. So when when I'm saying the one and you're saying the other, I think we're we're, we're, like we're both people. pointing at this musty. It's like old. an endorsement. <laughs> like when I say leathery, I'm thinking like a '70s vint leather jacket in a vintage store. You know, and it, that's it, the mustiness it, that you yeah, I think yeah, you're saying. We're not quite tannery level. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Anyway, um, I mean, it's there's not a huge. It's, it's not a big flavor. I was expecting oh, something a bit bigger. Oh. But so now, now think, take a sip, and and realize it's twelve percent, because I think this is the thing this beer is doing really well, is the sweetness is is really sweetness yeah. is clearly from the alcohol mm. and it's just blended really well into yeah. the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, and again, like you're getting a little bit of the bourbon. Oh yeah. Mm. So I think some of that musty, leathery, whatever is probably from the, the the wood. Yeah. Um. As as Lucy and I were talking about, like bourbon casks are only used once. Sure. But it has to be a fresh mm -hmm. set wood, and so like, I think that's why it's like not a huge taste because the wood has literally only had one chance of absorption and then one mm. chance of giving back. Okay. And so we have a note that's interesting, but like if it's a bourbon cask, it's always it's it. It's not going to be really super complex mm -hmm. because you haven't given the wooden a chance, right? Right. Um, and so, uh, but like, it's clearly doing a thing here. I think I, I don't know what that thing is. I think that's what the mustiness is grounded in. Is this like woody? But like this, and I think that's what rounds out mm. this. Really should be heavy. It's a little thick, but not that. It's actually quite thin for a twelve percent. Like it is. That. It is. Yeah. Like, and yeah, I just it's a, it's super interesting, and I think, I mean, the the flavor text was literal flavor text. Like, it was just like okay. nonsense, blah. Like it was like oh, yes. mathematical, yeah, methodological, yeah, yeah, blah blah yeah, blah yeah. blah. But I was like, but like I see what you're aiming at with just a description as a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout, in the sense that the bourbon barrel aged is sort of balancing out the imperial like the strength of the imperial stout, so such that. If you didn't tell me this was 12%, I wouldn't immediately figure it out. Mm. Because, like, as soon as I sort of focus, I'm like, yeah, this is clearly a high alcohol beer. Because that's the core of the sweetness is just the alcohol. Yes. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's doing those things. It's doing that thing around a bunch of other things. So mm. you could easily just not pay attention and not notice. Yeah, very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So anyway, um, hey, that, that's I, it. Oh. Yeah, I'd like to just um, talk about this beer that I've just cracked open. Um, Did you have an entire beer during our beer segment? Is that yeah, what happened? But, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. I just wanted to be clear. It's fine. Yeah. We're, we're, oh, we're, by the time you finished what you're talking about, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll yeah. probably be ready for another beer. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was quite middling on that, um, the Moncada. Um, 
I, I really want to give nice. some more impressions of the other yeah, beers yeah. that I've had. That was just a very middling one for me. Uh-huh. I know I said it was like not nice several times. I didn't mean that. <laughs> it was like it was it was nice, just nothing offensive, nothing great. But um, yeah, nice just not in the way you describe a blind date, but nice in the way you describe an evening. Yes, pretty much. That's a, <laughs> that's quite an apt uh, description. <laughs> but um. This one, this is a crack. That's it. I oh, it. Yeah, okay, this yeah. is another Excellent. crack beer from um, uh, from Italy. It's called Gorilla, and I just had to speak about it because, it, 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 <clears throat> like, <clears throat> Gorilla not as in ape out, but in Gorilla faction, like people, you know, what, wolf like that. yeah, yeah. Gorilla wolf. wolf I, I was going to ask mm. whether it was. But there is actually an ape primates. hand on here. There's a very oh. furry hand. Get that for you. Anyway, it don't matter. But um, yeah, it's five point eight percent. Okay, it's super <laughs> yeah. racist or just misspelt. Yeah. Who knows? Nah, I think it's fine. So anyway. Oh so... no 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 no. <clears throat> well, I don't take it that way. So <laughs> I was gonna the... say. <laughs> I like, speak for like, every. I, I, I saw That's the line color. you were drawing, and I was like, <laughs> Lucy didn't have that path. I don't think it's. So it doesn't matter. Useful for her Absolutely. to have that bath. You've given I it speak food. for everyone. Of course. <laughs> oh, including right, so, so, you, deal. So it's yeah, fine. So, so you've got your primates. Um, your your yes. primate faction. I think it's just basically a unity of everybody. God knows. I don't know. It's Italy. Everything goes. But um. Mm. Y- yeah, it's, it's, it's vino. Yeah, I was about to say it's like it, it, it's very vinous quality what we're talking about like um just in terms of how thin it is and that mm. kind of aroma it almost reminds me of like a brute ipa like okay. um oh interesting it's like the, when you finish the, that taste it's very it's very wet but then it just goes very dry like mm. right after but it's still very like satisfying um right. it's got that kind of vinous quality that very grapey kind of um, taste to it. It's not very citrusy. It's not lining towards that, but it's like it's. Let me let me have another taste. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I've just been like drinking this. Like Susan the poured mm. it. It's like yes, absolutely. It's like as I say, it's 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 not dry, but it's like I just want to drink more because because it taste. feels like it has a very definitive like. End point on its taste, oh, but it's not, it's so not it's drying my throat out. So mm. it's not drying you out such that you're like, I need liquid, but it's like, this taste was really interesting and it stopped, so I need yeah. to be fresh. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. So I, 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 I waffle on those types of beers because I li- like that because it's like, oh, I want to drink this more because of the taste, mm. but also I'm like, are you gaming me? Like, are you meta gaming me? You're like, <laughs> oh. If I just make this taste interesting but short, you'll just fucking pound seven of them. Ah. Yeah, because it's very juicy at like the I, I first really taste, no, but then you, you finish it and it's like, oh, I still want more. It feels a bit dry, but it's not so, it's so much that it's dry because you're still getting that like vinous quality, like that. You're getting a yeah. bit of fruit, but yeah, it's it's fantastic. Like as I've said, like cracks beers are just yeah. Amazing, and this is just another one. I just wanted to talk about it real quickly. Not That's really quickly, excellent. I so think good. I think we're probably going to crack another beer, but before we do, just so you've got a chance to, to finish what you've what you've got in your glass, Adam, Lucy. I know you've got two games that you want to talk about. Talk about one of them, please. Which is, the, which is <laughs> whilst we've got a chance to drink another mm. beer, which is the quickest game that you can talk about. Okay, which is the, which is I, I, the one I, I, that you don't one... have uh, yeah, 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 discussion yeah. around, perhaps? Oh, Absolutely. I thought you meant which one had the shortest playtime. <laughs> no, no, which one doesn't have which the biggest yeah. discussion yeah. around? Because one took me absolutely forever to finish, so I'll talk about the fin- the one I finished quicker. Um, it's from Finland, it's kind of it? kind of weird how, like, recently I've been finding that I've been playing like games in the same same kind of, not kind of um, genre or that they're trying to go for but they both have this like the same kind of theme and okay. recently i played two games that have quite a political theme um mm. one the being one three and democracy two yes in addition to those 
I, I, I don't know why you humor this stupid. Like I do, <laughs> I appreciate it, but I don't know why you do it. In addition to those fantastic games that I could speak at length about, um, I I played the, the, the Westport Independent, mm. which is a game that I've been. Um, I've had in my Steam library, I think a code like ages ago, mm. since like twenty early twenty sixteen, before literally the world went to hell. <laughs> and um <laughs> the occupation, which is it's quite it's quite an interest because I know Ben you asked me about the occupation, yeah. how it was and stuff like that. So I'll I'll go in a bit more depth um about that. But it, it's kind of weird how it a game came after like the world went to hell in 2016, and a game that was like predicting hell before 2016. Mm. Um, because I wanted to play the Westport Independent like, as soon as it came out, but I just never got around to it. It's basically a Papers Please esque like kind mm. of game where basically you are um, in charge of a paper, a newspaper um, editor, okay. like head editor of the yeah. newspaper and you're having to tailor your articles and the way they're spun etc etc like Ooh, that dependent on how um basically there's a new act coming through i can't remember the name of that it's like the unions people's union act or something right. like that where it's saying okay we're gonna <laughs> for what of a better word, censor your newspapers so it doesn't reflect badly on the government. Right, yeah. Like, mm. we're going to keep people uplifted even though everything's going to hell, etc. Like that. Mm. It, it, it's very prescient in what it was. And I think mm. I'm glad I played it now after right. a post Trump, post Brexit, post. Yeah, post post. Everything. Post, uh, post everything. Yeah. <laughs> post Washington Post. Um kind of era so i'm actually glad that i played it after because it's like damn this these things are just hitting so much harder now right, it's like yeah. the thing got middling reviews when it came out and i understand like why it did it's a very short game there's not many mechanics to it basically you're just sent the you, you get um basically articles sent to you and you're like right. okay i'm the head editor of this i have to send it to my 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 employees of this newspaper we know we're going to basically be censored in a few weeks let's either try and stir this rebellion up or appease to the government and we're going to be right. like so, you know so it's like papers please in the sense that it's like bureaucratic moves but because yeah. you're a journalist you have there are like uh, distinct freedom path. like well there's distinct yeah. paths of like what can I do with my voice? Either yes. compound the propaganda, unlike, unlike or, papers, yeah. please, which was like your voice didn't matter. Like yeah, you exactly, were you, were like, you were just surfing, following you were just, that yeah. process, which yeah. which mm. is what made it like super impactful. Yeah, but, like yeah, that. I mean, yeah. As soon as you move to journalism, it's like, well, I can either toe the line or mm. try and fight the line. Yeah, yeah, and those are both those have their pros and cons. Mm. But like, that's a that that's the central choice. Mm. Yeah, and I, and can I honestly waffle think this back game, and forth, and that's yeah. what makes that interesting. Yeah. In a way that, like, Papers Plays, you just don't have the line in the same sense because it's purely bureaucratic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the and you have this. Yeah. Yeah. You have like at the start four staff members, and um, they all I'm are on the more. side of, oh, I'm I more, um, you know, pro government or pro rebellion and stuff like that, and I think that's. You know, it's really interesting to toe that line because not everyone who, you know, pro-government is necessarily mm. wrong and sometimes you have to force them to write mm. this all the same way. It's like, okay, I'm, you know, pro-rebellion. Yeah. It's like, I, th I honestly think this game came out, like, even six months later, later I think it came out at the start of 2016. I think if it came out, oh, like, yeah. even six yeah. months later, like, nine months later, post it would have been... Brexit, pro or like yeah. Trump, it would have been. Yeah. yeah, I think it would have been like That's really frustrating. reviewed mm. higher, yeah. and it's like it's kind of prescient. It's like that's why I appreciate it for what it is, I'm, and I'm glad I played it at this point, like two, three years on from that point. What was it called? The Westport. The Westport Independent. Right. Yeah, okay. it's it's a very short game, probably about an hour and a half. 
of. Um, oh, okay. There's not much really depth hard. to it, but it's like just looking at that. Yeah, from they're making a point. That's the, the, mm. And I think that yeah. that's yeah, yeah. so. There's that whole bolt like our games are thing obviously they are if you don't think that then yeah the division like come on man like yeah but Jesus. like but like this like so so something like this where it's like it's an hour and a half it's it's about like the interaction between journalism and the the, the state and its representation yeah that's clearly making an artistic move in the sense of like i'm i want to represent this dynamic in a way that see that that describes where the tension of the world is. Yeah, and it's like so you I'm can, clearly doing you can an artistic either thing. way. Yeah, you but, can be like, oh, yeah. I'm all, I'm all in on this. What the yeah. government's trying to say, and like censor, not yeah. censor. I should say yeah. that in a better way, but like, yeah, totally make it curate, 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 curate news so I mean, it's factual. I think is, and they do is a good yeah. toe the line move of yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're obviously know. they're obviously pushing you towards a like you know the Left government wing. is yeah. like controlling censoring this and but, that, like that. But it's like if you don't want to go towards that route, then there's achievements and there's different endings for okay. So I think that's to exactly believe in the government, like, believe in the country, and like that. Yeah, so, yeah. games are is I mean it's obvious if if you don't mm. understand it, you don't know what games are. Yeah, but absolutely. like what makes um that interesting is the fact that you can be via the mode of interactivity mm -hmm. you get to represent this like wider scope of like end states or points of view because mm -hmm. when i'm telling you a story or giving you a film or etc like i have to just narrow that down i have to give you a story yeah and if i'm really good you can interpret it in several different ways mm -hmm. and yeah. like th those are the filmmakers yeah. i enjoy is like when it's not obvious, like, yeah, but like yeah. with a game, you can literally have a totally different experience because choice one, choice two, choice three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, but and, th and, this and, game and like, is, and yeah. that makes it like that interactivity makes it so that you can highlight what you think is important, which I, is uh, like absolutely. Yeah. I think this game's obviously uh, built from a you know left leaning sort of yeah. um, point of view, which is. You know, obvious from the because it wants you to um, rebel and stuff like that, which is you know part of the rebellion. Yeah. But um, because well, how many if it was the inverse, it, there wouldn't be a at trying to censor the newspapers. But even so, even so, it's like it still offers you the chance to, as I say, get achievements and have everything go towards like the more um you know tailor tailor the newspaper to more um like, right 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 wing views no, not, yeah. not, not even right wing I, like 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 the more, more um stable consistent. The, the, the suburbs and the uh the more the mm. you know i i think higher earning like kind of welfare and the classes and stuff like that so it's like yeah. they allow you to do that it's obviously wanting to push you a certain way but the right, achievements okay. to go the other way. So it's like, you want to, you know, but, not everything's it, cut and dry, not everything's, you know, black, black and white. white every, yeah. There's a few areas I mean, of gray. Like, even someone on matter. your paper, yeah. like working at the paper, it's like, this is a kind of weird thing. It's like, there's two people who are obviously more left leaning, but there's someone who's right leaning, and there's someone who's, oh, I see it from both ways, and that's that's refreshing to see. It's like it's not yeah. just black and white. She's like, "Oh, hold on, you know, you're gonna cut funding to my kid's school, but hold on, I'm not, you know, pro this or pro that." And it's like, oh, fancy she has her own. Name. No. Um, anyway, yeah. So no, I mean, I, so this is why I think it's important to like recognize that because of the dynamics of games, we can pick out these different end yeah, states yeah. in a way that mm. is interesting and you can do that in like a really like flat-footed straightforward way of like well if you did that then you're the left wing ending if you did that mm. you're the right wing ending mm. or you can like because you have that dynamicism you could like paint a picture where it's all gray and we understand that that choice isn't a clear one yeah 
And yeah, yeah. And what makes and, and I think games more... are naturally situated to mm. show off why these aren't black and white issues because if three playthroughs gets you vaguely to a, a very different but ultimately commensurate views, you understand that like my grounding for no, I'm just going to be a strict libertarian or I'm just going to be a strict whatever ultimately gets me to the same place because these views have this tenuous na nature sure. yeah, and, and absolutely, like you yeah. can exp you can't in like a book you could try and explain why this is the case mm -hmm. but if you give someone three playthroughs on a very simple game and show that like ultimately it's kind of the same that's so much more impactual because yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they've said they've said no now i'm going to take this point of view and oh it doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah, but what I also um, also thought was quite impactful is like um, like if you force like someone to write something that they're not comfortable with because it you know it counteracts with their ideologies, then yeah, they will leave the paper or yeah, um, of course they will. and and like you're always under the scrutiny of the state if you you know go too much. There are meters. Um, if you go too much in like you you are a complete rebel and it's like, it's like rain. we're trying to sorry i said it's like rains yeah yeah absolutely it's like rains if you're like too much in this way of the state then it's like uh they're gonna look at you scrutinize the people who are working for you scrutinize you probably shut your paper down or if you're too much the other way then it's like oh the people who are writing for you or people who are reading the readership they're not gonna yeah, really paper. You're not going to sell papers, or the people who are writing for you who are, you know, who are anti-government. They're not going to write for you anymore. So th th yeah. there's a constant like um, balancing act. So it's very yes. interesting, and you find in the end, as you say, they're like, you know, politically outside of the game. Yeah. That the people who are in the middle are your biggest asset at the end of the day, and it's like you want to keep those people happy because they're not going to be under too much scrutiny of the state one way and they're not going to leave your paper at the yeah. other end i mean so, so one one of i've had enough to drink i'm i'm not <laughs> as hot back um so one of the problems i it, have is, so philosophically i have a, a problem with people thinking that i because i modeled x i'm perfectly representing it mm. mm-hmm so the idea that there's a gap between what is modeled and the model. Yeah. And I think that's a thing. So, so the, sorry. the way you describe this, Lucy, is mostly totally understand, mm -hmm. happy about. But, like, there is this danger, which is, well, because I showed you there was a problem, there must be a problem. Right. And it's not necessarily the case. And so I, so one of the worries I have with these um, describing, especially political political situations, is like, well, I can describe it in a certain way that makes my story seem more impactful. But most people don't get that the story like abstracts or idealizes in certain ways, and so if the story says X, it doesn't mean X is really the big problem. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the gaps that comes out of this is if we, if generally people don't think, if people don't know that maybe the problem might come out because I'm highlighting things specifically because I'm choosing to highlight them, not because they're actually a problem. Yeah, it, it, but it, it highlights, uh, you know, like current media right that some of it is very superficial and they decided to hone in on some specific point when actually right. that may not be the actual uh, selling the point. actual issue yeah and so, you know, that, so that, but it is the selling point that is what they know people will tune in to look right. at or listen to and or so, read about but that is not the ultimate issue okay. that is being so, kind of so, affected so, so by like, it so. you can you can characterize a study in a certain way or mm. a narrative a certain way that that like sells papers or gets you from A to B, but when you look at like the details of what that thing describes, it doesn't actually make sense to interpret it that way. Yeah, and I think that 
there it's a really great so it's like the flip side of what i was talking about like 10 minutes ago which was fuck interactive narratives get us to be able to describe um, a huge variety of states yeah because that same narrative can pick out different mm-hmm. functional things etc but the other side is is if we're not careful we and we know we're not careful we know like mm. facebook google etc are really bad at like their algorithms have racial bias etc mm-hmm. like if we're not careful then we're going if we assume that what is being modeled has a, or sorry the model has a clear direct mapping to what is being modeled when mm. actually has all these biases narratives especially then we think we'll that the yeah, scope yeah. of the stories are well, no, these are the functionally imp- important variables because mm. the story has been presented to me in this certain way, and that's what the story tells me the functional variables are. And yeah, we'll, yeah we'll I, I, I agree yeah. with that. Like, you know, like, this game was made, envisaged, it comes in how long games take to develop mm. in... You know, it came out in early 2016, but it would have been developed well before then. Like, the story would have been written well before then. Um, So, I agree with that. Like, you know, it's just more... It seems more prescient in day and age, but they would have been building off something that they would have... was brewing, but it it doesn't necessarily mean that that would have shaped reality as it is today that's just what they were thinking or as you said ben like and you would do it's like one doesn't mean the other like yeah and and so it's like you know I guess so it's, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking this was made thought. for a certain purpose yeah. Yeah. and it wasn't and as you say ben it's like every art is like somewhat political and it's like they were making this for a certain purpose, so, so it can go either way. Yeah, it just seems now that it's very prescient. In like, as well, I say, I this mean, game got middle reviews. Some of them are prescient, and some of them aren't. Right, like Far Cry Five. Does I don't a don't even talk about Ubisoft. Yeah, like, honestly, <laughs> they, they so, just, yeah. no, no, you're totally right. I'm just saying, like, they don't absolutely. Some of these can be. They want to have it both ways, and it's yeah, absolutely it, yeah. bull. Of it, because... I'm sorry. Because, because this is the bottom of, line. Yeah, because yeah. A, a lot of their games I, I are very. Uh, I apologize to everyone involved. A lot of their games are very political. But, but they're not did you see the me. Division Two no, thing? They ha- but they, they have, have politics. Did you see the they're Division Two thing that they were like, no, it's not nothing to do with political. Oh, it is. And I had like the Mexican. Uh, yeah, just that's what I mean. Like, but that's what I mean. Like they want politics. They want they, politics they, they, they recognize the that politics the French. can sell it's, 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 it's not. It's not just it's that. The it's not just that. Done for centuries. It's not. It's not them sitting on the fence. It's them going. Okay, yeah. It's not. It's someone. Not someone has come along and gone. You know, they've got what maybe uh, two or three people who are pushing the through line for that game who have come up with the. The like narrative, the, the bare bones the, narrative, yeah, yeah. For, the, for the for the for the for the yeah, for the structure of what that's going to be man, like, through the single player missions, right? So, yeah, and they have come through that from a very specific point of view. Yeah, it is political, but they need to sell that game to as many people as fucking possible. Oh, so God, they yeah. make so it they go, It's not political. So, so that's what I'm saying. It's it's about that's what I can't politics. Understand. It, but it's not political because they know because it's because like they, oh, so if it was political, they, you they, would have to say. X or not X, and so it's about politics. But I think you will get you. You'll play that game say, through. But, but they no, don't. They, no, may not, they don't say it. They no, don't say no, X or not they X. They don't. They don't say it in their build up or in their marketing for the game. But we don't know what that game's going to say at the end of it. You I might mean, get to the we, end of it, and you have a very specific. But, they don't. but we know Just that. Make Wolfenstein and kill Nazis, and that's all. Yeah. Don't I mean, you, don't I mean, fuck the, the, the other problem is that, like, our political <laughs> oh, discourse man. is so hard. Death. I took that death happily. You see, fucking, I didn't. In Wolfenstein Two, just fucking. This is this is my biggest regret in life. Nail Hitler and then this just is, die. This is my biggest like, regret in life. I give a shit. Yeah, this is my biggest regret. I did it again. I I, I didn't. Although I, Mecha I Hitler is real. Past cool. him, and I read the lines. This is my biggest regret. Lucy, Lucy. Because I was honestly like, this guy is insecure and like crazy. Should I just do it? Completely, I was completely literally role playing at that very point. Yeah, like, trail. I hate him so much. I want to get through this so I can kill him. Right. I don't want to die like um, that president. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> I 
Oh, okay. Um, yeah. okay, we'll take a pause. We poured a beer. It was the... Oh, so this is from North Brewing. Um, and Duration, a collaboration from North Brewing and Duration, mm. is a West Coast double IPA, 8%. Uh, it doesn't have much information on, apart from the what? ingredients of water, barley, hops, and yeast. Yeah. There is there is nothing yeah, else. So it's just an 8% dipper. It's got okay. a very, like linear sort of have you tasted it yeah it? it's got yeah. it's got a lovely nose to it yeah the nose really is... really nice nose yeah the nose is very like lightly tropical it is it is so it's, it's like you you get a bit of mango a bit of passion fruit but mostly it's just like so it's it's like it's tropical fruits and sweet citrus yes yeah, sweet that, yes that is the yeah. key of the nose this is sweet citrus it is flavor wise. Switchress. Switchress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck you. Nintendo Switchress. I had that Prosecco with Kim, and that definitely didn't help the progression of the yeah. night. Um, I mean, it's flavor fun. wise, flavor wise, it's very different. Oh, God, yes. Holy shit. Really Sorry. different from the nose. I was not expecting this. It kind of dribbled a little on myself because I was like, whoa, well, this, is, this is like. So, the nose is a delicate, sweet light citrus mm -hmm. the taste is a like that's where the tropical fruit's coming in yep it's quite heavy in it's the very sense, heavy yeah in the sense of like not like oh god i'm being bogged down but like the tropical yes, fruits are a, there yes yeah yeah not a viscousy yeah uh, not a body yeah so it's still quite a thin mouthfeel um but it it is a like mango tropical uh Bit mango orange passion in fruit and yeah and like Specifically, like navel orange or like navel plus, like like a, a proper bitter orange, like a not a mandarin, orange, yes, like, a bitter like, like, orange, okay. yeah, definitely not a grapefruit, nice. but a bitter orange. Um, nice. and so it's like, what if a mango and a bitter orange sat a in baby. a beer? That's that's the immediate moment. You yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's 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 it's. Uh, I like the flavor. Oh, it's great, but like it's it's. But strong. it's so different from the nose. Yeah. The nose is like, what if you just had this idea I mean, of, it's so delicate. Is, like, uh, so the nose really reminds me of, um, y you know, we have, we have some beers where we can instantly recognize that it is a beer from that brewer. Yeah. yeah. So this smells like a beer from Dig. Yeah. Oh, you're right. It, it, it does. Yeah. It does. It mm -hmm. smells, ex it smells Almost exactly the same as the Dagger Dagger from like maybe last week, which it's I, the as soon as, but as soon as I smelt that, I'm like, mm. got it. This is from Dig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, like, that is used... what I got when yeah. we were there. Yeah. That is the 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 signifying kind of yeah, notes it, to this it's, beer. It, the, it's the, like the, the nose. It's yeah. broad, but it's so like it's not strong, mm. but it's a broad nose. Yeah, that, that like has a few moments that are very clear. Yep. So this that, nose is, yeah. is like, yeah. It is, that, and, it, and that's exactly what this nose says. It's like, I'm a little bit sweet. I'm very citrusy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Sometimes I'm not that's, uh... boring. I'm not light, but I'm not in your face. Yeah. I'm doing this note, then that note. That's what I'm doing, then I'm stopping. Yeah. yeah. And Sometimes then you have the step and you're like, oh, this doesn't taste anything like that. Sorry. No, it's fine. Sometimes it's like a gift and a curse because it's like yeah. clouded water. It's like, yeah. yeah, we've had so many of your beers. Yeah, I just want something a bit different. Yeah. yeah. I think the last different thing that I had from there was like an IPL. It was like, I couldn't tell it was a cloud water and that was refreshing to me. But, mm. um, but yeah, sometimes it's like, it's very homely. It's very like refreshing. Like, no, it's like, yes, this is a brewery that I like. Yeah. I like their house yeast and like, I feel home, yeah, yeah. comforted. Yeah. So, uh, like with the flavor for this beer, I, I would say like, it's, it's, Definitely, it's that, it's that bitter orange. It's got a little bit of a that bitter like, orange tropical fruit. Yep, it's got a, it's it's. We say citrus, but I think it's very much. It's like it's a lemon flavor, mm. but with a lime feel. Like it's a very like um, zesty. Oh yeah, so 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 this is what I mean. Though, so I I wouldn't say lemon and lime, but I think it's, when you say zesty, this is what I mean by like a bitter orange. It's the mm. fact that it's. It's got a general orangey feel, but like part of that taste is that like bitter exterior. Yeah, yeah. And it, 
it doesn't have, have to be a lemon or a lime. It's the idea is like I know, but I am, I, part I, I, of the so so what like it's what grounds this as bitter is like it's the bitter when you think of a peel of a citrus fruit. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, mm. it is. And then when you think about the sweetness, the, yeah. you're thinking of the interior. Mm -hmm. And so in this sense, it's a bitter orange, or it could be a bitter whatever. Like it, the idea is like, I think sort of when we look at what makes like the the bitter taste of appeal mm. i don't actually like eat except for maybe like a mandarin any sort of citrus fruit would give me this sense of the bitter peel and that's what's okay that's what makes that like bitter yeah and then when you look think of like and where the sweetness is coming from is this like the sweetness of the flesh and the flesh yeah. any f orange would do Maybe not a lemon or a lime mm. because they have a bit more tart in the flesh. <sighs> sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I. I. I don't know. Sometimes I conflate like sometimes I know what you're on about it. Like lemon and lime. There's a very subtle difference. It's all about the zest. It's very subtle. It's like when I think of sour, I definitely think of lemon but when i think yeah. of like lime you just think of like a little pinch yeah little pinch where it's like oh yeah slight bit I, of sour i think it's like a, it's like a concentrated strength move like mm. if it's tart yeah. it's probably yeah. a lemon but if it's doing this very specific mm. thing strongly it's a lime i i, I know what he's on about i know what you, you, I, like like it, i think it's very subtle it's, it's, yeah it's, but you can easily swap the two, and it's like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I so, can, yeah. But mm, it, it, Ben's just like, no, no, no. Ben's like, no, fuck you, fuck you guys. <laughs> I understand. I understand completely. I, I completely I don't understand. Think no, I don't think you. No, no, I do. Understand. But it, you know, like when I say that I'm getting a bit of lemon in the flavor, like you, you, you have it. And I, I get am that getting that orange like, from the yeah. flavor. I am getting okay. that that orange. But you're also getting some flesh. lemon. But it's a very like. It's almost like at the top of the flavor, there is that very kind of like, it's not even cutting. It's kind of like, it's just through line. Mm -hmm. like this very solid sort so, of like so I think, citrusness. And that's what makes yeah, it like lemony through, because which it's makes like it dominating. lemony, yes. It's because yeah. of the fact that it dominates and it the might, other again, yes, yes. Yeah. It might it's not like, be I, lemon, I, I, but it's the idea. Yes, yeah. exactly. Now I've I see what many saying. beers on Untapped where it's like, IPAs, nothing about them is sour, but it's like, yes, it's lemony. Mm, yeah. It's like, yeah, you, it's kind of a hard... It's, a, it's, a, it's, cause yeah. it's, it's, it's so tart, citrus, yeah, bitterness, a, and, yeah. oh, sorry, and, yeah. sorry, tart, citrus, and bitter citrus are very close. Yes, and that's so, why I understand what you're saying when, about lemon yeah, and lime. Exactly, yeah, right, and so, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that's exactly what differentiates, and, and yeah. when, when you want to say lemony or limey, you're probably eking towards one end, even though yeah. you're really saying My, Most tart. things with, yeah. um, you, you're like, trying to lagers, say like, yeah. I, mm. I, you get with, with that with a lot of lagers, it's like, it's got this lemony, like, kind of... It's not quite citrus, but it's it's so hard to describe. Yeah, lemony, like it's very light and it's very. It's not the esters or anything like that, but yeah, it's lemony. It's like oh, that light. But it's so it's so. I understand what he's trying to say. Yeah, yeah, it's completely, very yeah. subtle. It's very hard to describe, but yeah. I I feel like um, now he's gone. I should be in the center of the picture. I have to sit yeah. like this throughout. Shall the we talk entire... about the uh, occupation? <sighs> Well, you I wonder whether I wonder whether we hold that. Hmm. Hold it, maybe. I know. It, I know it leads on a little bit from the political discussion we've it had. It does, yeah. But, 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 hmm. I do want to hear about the occupation because I want to play it. Yeah. And I've had kind of like a very limited kind of couple of notes from you about that game, but I'm more interested in Resident Evil Two. It does not interest either. And he, I, I want to know about Resident Evil Two. Yeah, yeah, it's superb. Like, it's it's yes. so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's taken me two months to play it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 like. Not quite. It's not quite that long, surely. It came six out, weeks. Um, six weeks, maybe. February. Yeah, mm. maybe. Yeah. I'm, end of January, twenty fifth, twenty second, something yeah. like it's, that. It's it's so good. Out. But 
all I want to come to, like, is that Capcom... They're making me like Capcom again, because Capcom had a really low point in this, like, generation, yeah. I think, like, with Street Fighter Five, and, um... I'm not a massive Street Fighter fan, mm. but even so, Street Fighter Five, God, God forbid, but, um... Like, uh, they had Capcom Vancouver with uh, Dead Rising 3, which I really, oh, yeah. really liked, but De Dead Rising 4, and it's like, they were just putting out remakes, like the Capcom, um, like, collections and stuff like, like that, a which SM, I Capcom don't... Capcom SNK type things. Yeah. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. When they put out Chip and Dale, which is my jam... Oh, that the kind of the Capcom Disney collection like, weekend yeah, so, collection. Yeah, thing. yeah I yeah. absolutely. I I had a Disney Google. Um, yeah, yeah. I feel like I had a I Google. I had a Google alert so for. Um, I'm just interrupting. It's all right. I had a Google alert for Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, the game, because that is my jam on NES. I loved that game. Um, I had a oh, Google alert for that. And it was okay, like so when that Chip came and out. Dale, and who are the other two main characters? Um, uh, cheesy fat. There's, yeah, there's the so big big dude. Dude. fat is big. Yeah, he's uh, big. There's the big dude. Jesus he's Christ, got a great yeah. name. Cheesy. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not that. Monterey Blanc. Uh, Monter blue? Yes, I yeah. knew mean, it was cheese cheesy. Yeah, like. it was yeah, a cheesy Monterey Monterey related yeah. names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's um the the, the well, mechanic right girl is like it's not gauge. It, it doesn't like matter at this point. It was. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. Ah, I, mean, I love that um, game, but it's like I, I had a, mean, Google, a Google alert for like when are they gonna like put this out because that was my jam, and then they put it out and I completed about half an hour. <laughs> God damn, that game is easy when you can rewind. <laughs> Who would have thought? Mean, like all when you're, Mega when you're not when you're not ten. Yeah, I wasn't ten. I, I, mean, I was like I, I three. Ha <laughs> yeah, I, was say, I I have to say that like having that old. just done housemate auditions, um, for like three hours. Ch like, Ch 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 Are you supposed one of to one of the people who auditioned? Um had a mark against her because she said that's my jam four times in the half hour that we interviewed her. Oh, and one kind of the OBO jam. Yeah, yeah. And so one my of, NBA one of our, my housemates was like, she said that's my jam four times. <laughs> and I was like, did she, did she refer to NBA I, I, jam? I, I get you, but like, I, I, I didn't think it was... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah anyway. I get that, I get did that. she Sorry, refer yeah. to NBA jam? No. Kick her out. Um... Yeah. But yeah, no, anyway, no, they weren't. Yeah, so Capcom are fucking Capcom, killing it. I, I, I right look, wait, yes, wait, they are. With Devil Capcom May Cry, are killing it. In what with sense? May Cry, the, 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 good games. Got, yeah. Well, what's the last good Capcom game? Resident like Evil Devil 2. May Cry. What's the last one before that? Devil May Cry. Like that literally came no, out like that. the other day. Came out. Resident Evil. No, I was gonna say. Yeah, like, like the, 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 Oh, also, um, someone's let me Resident Evil Seven, so I'm gonna play that. Soon. Yeah, Resident you Evil Seven. That was the last yeah. one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and that one got really good reviews. Regarding reviews. Seven, yeah, they've been on a roll for some years. It's like there was a very low point for them. They were just <laughs> all they do is remake Resident Evil. I'm still angry about that because all I want them to do is remake Dino Crisis, and I don't <laughs> even care yeah. about Resident. Evil. Yeah, like, no. Please, for the love of God, just remake Dino Crisis. That's all I want. Honest, if you could go into first person mode, I was gonna say, if and was, do if, Jurassic World Evolution, because dinosaurs that game was, are way like, more if you interesting could go into first -person than mode, beast. That's enough Dino Crisis for me, but you can't. So. If there was a better, if there was a better reason for playing a VR game, screw VR, than, like than a no. than a crisis style oh, shooter. I see, what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know what it is. That like yeah, I, pop I, in, pop I, I out, don't like, yeah. VR. like crisis style. I, I, I don't. don't know, it, doesn't to, it doesn't have to be VR. Yeah, it has oh, that's to be VR. fine. Yeah. But ben it said it has fun. to be VR. I, ju I just want Dino Crisis ah! remastered. Yeah. That's all I want. In, in I the same way that great. Resident Evil Two was remastered, just remake Dino Crisis. Because every time I see like um, on Twitter or something, I mean, like Capcom saying, "What should we remake next?" 
and it's like oh oh these the these people like oh what would you like to see remade in the style of uh, uh, Resident Evil 2 the answer is always Dino Crisis <laughs> I thought yeah. I was the yeah. only one. No, the answer is Super Street I Fighter thought... 2. Yeah. No, I want to play a, 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 a first Fighter person is. VR right, version seven. of Super Street Fighter 2. It would think... be the worst, and no one would be good at it, and then be like, oh, fighting games need a third person perspective, because <laughs> turns out I can't fucking do the moves to do the moves. Also, it's creepy when Cammy it pl- well, turns around and turn- ah, yeah. turns out that she's wearing the Skippy suit because I'm apparently right beside her. Uh, uh, Adele, like when yeah. Ben asked me to talk about Resident Evil 2, that was just a code word for me to talk about Dino Crisis. Ah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 I went to the loo and missed that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's yes, all I want to yeah. talk about. I'm, I was just saying how they should remake Dino or I anyone mean, I got Dino Crisis for free on the PS Vita via PSP PS Plus. I will, really? I, will, I yeah, own it was, because of only, some PS Plus. It's thing. on. It's, it's on can't PS Vita. Was like, over in like you know Canada and USA. It's not over. Yeah, so it's, th- not, th- it's not out here. Really? So yeah. So I thought it we was. We got Crash um, Bandicoot. You got Dino Crisis. Yeah. So mm, this is by. this is why my PS subscription ps plus is north american because i've i've I, I like in the past year i have played some dino crisis yeah yeah because i could and it was free on that thing that i have that i could hold it so it's weird i'm the like polar opposite of lucy um in that like i don't take the switch anywhere yes but I, like i like handheld games but you take and your vita. So the vita is is my yeah, yeah. like and i forget that the switch is primarily a handheld idea <laughs> like so i was like eh, whatever and it's like oh no and so every time like lucy and i talk about the, the switch we're we just like miss each other very different styles because i playing with rarely take it out of the dock mm. and she's never put it in a dock well like from like so yeah uh, from kind of like from what we jumped in with lucy with um yeah with her playing resident evil 2 Hey, I'm I did sorry. the thing with so her. You didn't have to her. make it awkward. I got for so that. disgusted yeah. at the fact that away. Dino Crisis has not been remade yet. So, uh, so with 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 Capcom kind of returning to franchises and yeah. you know, like Resident Resident Evil carving out of space. Resident Evil is one of their biggest franchises, right? I know. In, yeah, like after uh, after Monster Hunter, apparently. Jeez, <laughs> Monster uh, Hunter sold, which they're going to turn into a movie, obviously. So six seasons and. Isn't yeah. that with um the same, what's her name? Bird who starred in a Mila, Mila Jovovich. Jovovich. Yeah, exactly Mila, the same Mila, yeah. cast as the Resident Evil films. Why, Why not? not? <laughs> so um, on the, the fifth way, element is know, a backdoor pilot like, for. So, but, but but Resident Evil is kind of like a marquee Capcom title. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Street it's... Fighter is a marquee Capcom title. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. Oh, well. Well. Yeah, it is. It is, but it is in the but... exact same way. We we think Bruce Willis, Capcom, <laughs> and we think yes. Jean Claude yeah. Van Damme, Capcom. So, so they've just they've just, just kind what of, we do. They've just re released, or they've just they've just re- sorry re released. They've just they've released, released uh, uh, Devil May Cry Seven. That looks five. Super fun. To be honest. V. I've never played the is it five it is or is it, is it five, five or is it, or is it, it is V? Five. No, it is. Oh well, it's V. I, uh, I, I think it's five. five. Yeah, DMC. V. I don't think it's Battle Five. Battlefield Five. I think it's five not, rather than V. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So we've kind of like you know we have this kind of like little bit of resurgence from yeah. Capcom. Okay, yeah. So absolutely. we may you know. At some point, we may see a couple of their older franchises please start to please. push forward a bit. I'm not. Uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't put a lot of faith. But in that. that's fine. Yeah. But they're not. What new game are we seeing from Capcom? What we're new not. We're IP, not. What that's new the, franchise? That, are we I mean, seeing that's from Capcom? that's the worst. They're, they're, my problem. they're going back that's into the their thing. kind of their, right. their catalog yeah. of IPs. That's yeah, it. That, that, I think that, that's the problem. They're, they're making so they made Resident Evil Seven a new Resident Evil. They made it, they made the R7, Devil May Cry. So R7, made Devil May Cry Five a new Devil May Cry. Give game. me a second. But it is a franchise. It's a gift game. and a curse. Yeah. And they're re-releasing games. So I think Capcom is afraid of doing new IP, and that's 
detrimental. Well, like deep the, down, the, the, no, no, the, the game that was going to come to PlayStation just hasn't appeared. It, let yes, me tell it, you, it, you yeah. what. Let me tell but, you but, what. But, give me sorry, Dill, just, to, okay, give okay. Me, I just say my one thing, you first. which was yeah. what. I, so I think it's a problem that they th- they Capcom thinks they need to just cling to whatever. Yeah, the past, but they are not the average game company w- because. RE7 is not a general... It's not a generic Resident Evil game. Like, mm-hmm. they went to first person. Yeah. They took a lot of power of, like, like the notion of what it means to be an RE protagonist. Sure. Yeah, yeah. They did a very different thing. Mm-hmm. And so it's one of those things where, like, you don't need to just... You, you don't need to cling to these associations, but given that you clung to those associations, you did a very interesting thing. Well, and, and, that's, so like, and that's great. But, you know, so, so it's like, this is yeah, the two sides of the same coin, else. which was, like, you could just do whatever you want. But given that you've chosen not to do whatever you want and you're beholden to the past, your interpretation of the past is sufficiently freewheeling that it's interesting and dynamic. And so, sure. oh, but, like, I would rather a Capcom who wasn't beholden to any series. Sure. But okay. given that they're beholden to a series, the way they're interpreting, especially like Resident Evil, 7 is so different from 2. Mm-hmm. And they're oh, both, yes. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're both very... So the remaster of 2 is super successful. 7 was super uh, successful. I'll t- I'll and it's clear like they know yeah. those things are different. I'll tell you exactly what, what it is. I'll tell you exactly what it is. Yeah. Japanese games have only seen a resurgence in the last three years, maybe. Probably the last two years, mm. to be absolutely honest. Capcom were seeing very little returns on mm. their IPs from... To be honest, as a result of the content they were putting out, right? Um, in terms of, like, you know... Things that would appeal to Western gamers, like, yeah. for example, <laughs> Dead Rising 3, which I played a hell of a lot, and I enjoyed, but stuff like that, and they, you know, they gave Devil May Cry series to Ninja Theory, also right. a Western yeah. developer. They were just seeing, there was a very big lull from Japanese developers, mm. and that's only just started upticking now. Right. Like, Monster Hunter is... Their so, best-selling IP. Yeah, it turns out just that, that one game yeah. from how many years of Resident Evil? Twenty years of Resident Evil. So it's like they've seen an uptick now. Now they're going to start taking more chances right. and stuff like That's that. So I, I think we might see a new IP from Capcom maybe in a few years. But they are definitely leaning on, especially at the start of this um, generation, rightly so because it's very yeah. risky to put out in terms of. Like from a Western development, you know, kind of sort of thing. Um, new Mega Man, like yeah, not new Mega Man, Mega Man, Mega Man, like, Mega Man. But like, um, you know, the the, the Mega Man collection yeah. and Mega this, Man Eleven. Uh, yeah, and, and also I, I, that, like, but they've started putting out Mega Man Eleven. It, I think I, I think Capcom would give them a lot of discredit for like putting out stuff that was just like, oh yeah. We're just gonna put out things and like, but right. it's the same way they do that. It's the same way. Um, God, Lawn Lanning, what's his name? Um, you know the uh, the name's gone. Uh, Abe Abe Odyssey people do that. It's oh, like yeah, we're yeah. gonna build Old up World. revenue. Odd World, like we're Old gonna, World. Yeah. World. Yeah. We're gonna do that Old for the Old next World. generation. They probably didn't know where they were sitting at because it's like, you know, Xbox 360. If you don't yeah. remember. They were the the biggest upsurge in like console, you know, yeah. getting these out to people. It's like PS3 was not that for them, so yeah. it's like Japanese games didn't sell on that console. So you're just thinking, okay, Japanese games are not going to be, you know, a big thing on that console. Right? Who knows what's going to happen in the next console generation? Capcom was just like thinking, yeah, let's just reuse that. Resident Evil's just a just a hit with everybody. Yeah. Let's just, I mean, for God's sake, like Resident Evil Falls come to Nintendo Switch in a week's time. So it's like, yeah. let's just drum that revenue. So I think the next console generation, especially with that RE engine, which is fantastic, like 
I, I expect them to take more risks next generation. Yeah. But honestly, I, I, like next I generation, I'll still. Expect, but I hope. Mm. Well, yeah, I, I hope. I think it's, I and I think this is part of it. Like, you know, we're talking about kind of like Dino Crisis. Yeah. Oh, please. Just and, and I think that, and, <laughs> but I, love... I think that the way that that Capcom are going mm -hmm. does lean into the idea that we may get. Oh, for it, that sure. we may get a Dino Crisis game. You know, they are leaning into the idea. They're leaning that into they have. nostalgia. Like, they, it's just completely. They, yes, are. They, they are. They are bringing out. They are bringing out some new games, and they are thinking about new IP. But they are super leaning into their older franchises, and whether that is a, oh god, yeah, Monster Hunter, Devil May Cry, exactly. and Evil. Whether or, that's going to be a Mega new Man. Dino Crisis game, right? Or, uh, a, a remastered Dino or, Crisis yeah. game is kind of yet to be. But I think we will get one in the next, like in the next couple of years. Yeah. Ben, don't play with my heart, back. please. Don't just don't. It's like it. it, it, it I I yeah, I was cool. stressed out playing <laughs> Resident fire, Evil. Ben. How could I? I was stressed out playing with Evan. That's like, like over six weeks to finish it. Mm -hmm. It's such a fantastic game. It's like it, you made me. Capcom made me fell in love. I liked about them back in the early nineties, early two yeah. thousands, mm -hmm. because I played yeah. Resident Evil. Yeah, it didn't finish obviously because they had crappy sharks and <laughs> dogs it and also, spiders. It just takes effort and like yeah, it's just a, nonsense. A choice but of... it's like. Dinosaurs are exponentially <laughs> cooler than zombies. I don't care who you are. Dinosaurs are way better than anything. That's why Horizon Zero Dawn is the best game released in the last five years, obviously. But it's like... Uh, yeah, the problem Dino with the Witcher Crisis 3 was, it, it, it is just, The Witcher 3 yeah, is about it, dragons, not dinosaurs. It's like people yeah. think I hate... Well, Men? People I know... No, 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 I just... I, I, Just I the two it. people I know think I hate Resident Evil because I only played like really? one and four. Four. I think so, I think no, I didn't play four. It's like Evil six I and uh, yeah. no, no, five and six. It's but fine. It's you, like, can, you can buy four on the Switch now for like five hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's like I got bored of Resident Evil and it's that's a guff story. It's like, I don't like zombies because it actually stresses me out. I didn't finish like Silent Hill. Yeah. Too, because I get stressed. I don't like horror games. It's like the dinosaurs aren't that scary. They're just cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah like, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Dino Crisis is so much better, and it's got the same obviously, like tank control, kind of inventory management and puzzle right. as yeah. Resident Evil. And dinosaurs are cooler, and that's why I went towards Dino Crisis, and I bet on the wrong horse because they. Re-released every single Resident yeah. Evil, even the bad ones, but they <laughs> didn't re-release Dino, Dino Crisis, yeah. and that's all I want in life. And it's fine. The it. title for this episode is going to be "Please, Capcom, release re-release <laughs> Dino, Dino Crisis." Crisis. Yeah, yeah. 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 tweet at them every them. single day. Them every, every single yeah. fucking Please opportunity. Do. Um, Can you imagine how cool in the? Sh should I go back to Resident Evil? That game's no, cool. Nah, nah, Resident it's Evil good. Two. It's really so many podcasts have talked about how excellent Resident Evil Two. And I is. reiterate that mean, it's, it, it makes me yeah, fall in yeah. love in, in the original Capcom yeah. vision. But like, and, and so, like, so, it's so, so good. I will say that like Polygon has so a good. really good um, video on the difference between. RE2 and RE2 remaster. Okay. Because and so do so do um uh who else was it? Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, but, um, no. somebody else. <sighs> I shouldn't have interrupted if I can't remember. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm gonna I think it's Game Informer. Oh. Game Informer. Yeah. Have a good okay. one. So so what Polygon's point was was like there's no move restriction difference between the remaster and the original okay but the point of view is mm. a third person standard like approach the way you do today and because of the rendering restrictions of games back when already you came out you mm -hmm. so so basically it was like your character walks into a scene mm. and the controller pivots them with relation of the character who is moving yeah, in. Yeah, controls, yeah. yeah. But the remaster is 
the standard move now we do, which is you have a third person third character person and shooting, yeah. you when you walk to the left, it's the character's left and not the left in virtue of the screen. Sure. And what that means is you don't get some sort of some some interesting traps. Mm-hmm. And the polygon video basically was like this works a lot better and this is why RE2 is like even better in the new iteration because mm. you're grounded in the character and their point of view because you're grounded in the character point of view and not like a fixed I'm entering point. here and then going yeah, to the left yeah. etc some of these scenes are way more impactful mm. because you're moving with respect to you, not the scene, and so like your restrictions see, mean you something see, different. Yeah, and I, I think they they said this I in like disagree. a seven minute video, and mm. I thought that they made that point really clear, which was like, I disagree. It's with not that. a remaster; it's actually doing something more. Okay. I disagree with that because it's a sign of the times. Because every time I was entering a new room after that light um, opening door animation. I knew what was there confronting me, and it's still the same now. So I do not but, believe but like, that. If, if you I do not believe the technology actually accentuates the fear. If you had, I, 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 no, I guess I guess the point is like if you hmm. didn't know this beforehand, if you hadn't played this game before. I, I be don't have played Resident Evil. I've never okay, played okay, Resident okay. Evil 2, so... Okay, so then I misunderstood your claim. Your claim is, like... like. I think there's always a fear in, like, what's behind that next door. Oh, yeah, I that, think there's a fear a in, like, what's thing. coming yeah. for you. Totally. I think I think, I think, think the fear is accentuated, and it's like, oh, I'm not safe anymore. Yeah. Which is it's slightly different to what you're saying, Adil. It's like, um... I, I don't know... What what is a safe room anymore? Because mm. so I think I think that's what makes these games interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It's a few like... Resident Evil games. Yeah. That's the space that makes them interesting. And I guess mm-hmm. what the Polygon video slash the like remaster highlights mm-hmm. is to if that's the thing that makes it interesting, having a better harness on the point of view of the player. Yeah. Than pre-rendered screens such that you're, you know, oh yeah, it makes constantly a... moving left and right. Absolutely and agree way. that it flows yeah. better. So, so, so I think that's the thing that I took away from that polygon video. Mm-hmm. But in general, I think it's just a, oh yeah, if the most the, the most more things we can tag you as the player with in your point of view, the more this fundamental notion of why this is horrorful. Yeah. is impactful is because it's your point of view so either i could I, I could just do it in a, in a loose sense um which they're sort of saying in this polygon video video which is well as soon as you switch to uh the point of view is tethered to the character versus tethered to the scene that mm. makes some of these moves more interesting yeah and stuff yeah unless, well, yeah. Or you could go even further and say, like, mm, like I'm going to narratively interpret this such that, like, the way the scene is set up is limited by whatever the character knows versus just where the character is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a different type of move. And all I think, like, the what I think was interesting was that first step seems really, like, boring, but it's mm-hmm. not boring. Actually... Well- like yeah. the original version, by making you have to hit down on the D, uh, on on the analog stick to walk, like down, yeah, walk from the top of the screen mm-hmm. to the bottom of the screen, grounded you in a different way. And as soon as the game was recontextualized in a modern aesthetic, where we didn't have to pre-render everything, so what whatever point of view we wanted to like render is how we can like give the scene yeah. up. Suddenly, these horror things. It's like, well, it's a, it's about like your movement. Immediacy, yeah. And yeah, stuff you like move that. through the scene yeah. in a certain way because you are the target. Versus, all we can do is pre-render the scene. No, so no, no, just no. no I, I agree with that because, um, like, if this wasn't third person, I'd absolutely not be able to play it because it, that immediacy, as you're talking about, like, if it was first person, that would be overwhelming for me too much. Right. But 
as it's third person, and as you say, like, um, I disagree with you in the fact that it's like, um, like the loading screens, and I don't think that will take you taken from Polygon, but mm. like the loading screens, it's like that feels like oh, breath of fresh air. But the fact that you know that enemies are going to come towards right. you and you can go towards them, and it's like the same. There's no, there's no break of context or anything like that. Then it is yes, very scary, but um. But yeah, all I want to do is highlight the, the amazing parts of this game because we haven't really touched on that. It's just like the graphics in terms of like the character animation, in terms of just the character detail, like the, the yeah. animation yeah. and the um, like the scarring on them. I mean, the voice acting's pretty funny <laughs> in yeah. a weird way, yeah. but um, yeah, just the uh, the animation, this the the, the character. Deterioration, the um, the way they react to things, the animation—it's just fantastic. And the, the the zombies, it's like everything's perpetual in that game. You kill a zombie, it's going to be there from right, yeah. from the beginning to the game. I don't know what kind of memory capacity they need to do that, but it's it's fantastic. And yeah, just just the way that they in, in capture how. Capcom games used to feel like I'm not even going to talk about Resident fully versed in that series I, I played the first one not all the way through and that was right. before the remake so it was like mm. aging myself but um, yeah like Dino Crisis just the way you used to <laughs> feel about everything like totally. always on the always tense and always yep. looking for ammo management it's like I like that kind of thing I just don't like Resident evil with its well i wonder uh, like, it, I think it's, it's the narrative that got me and like the constant remakes and everything like that it's like you don't need revelations you don't need zero you don't need this like come on man just make some more totally. dinosaurs man yeah yeah <laughs> there's always just, more that thing, do it well i think it's but it, it, it's something that you know capcom took through with resident evil that they didn't yeah. really take through with anything else that you had uh resi one or resident evil yeah. RE2, RE3, which they were... big hits, fixed... and I get that. No, they it's were big like... hits, but... So the first three games were fixed camera positions. Yeah. Yes. The next three games were over-the-shoulder third-person games. Yeah. They mm -hmm. then come out with seven, which is a first-person game. Yeah. And you would imagine that maybe eight will be first-person and nine would be first-person, you know, following that yeah. trend. Yeah. So they then return to um, Resident Evil 2 Remake, which is then... In the style of four, five, and six, over the shoulder. Yeah, they've taken that different style, and they've taken at least the style that maybe they think they should. The game can evolve to. Yeah, the, the game has than, more options. Rather than pushing it into a first person, as is Resident Evil Seven, whereas with Dino Crisis, it's the games have always been fixed point cameras. Yes, right. We didn't get that step. With with Dino Crisis yeah, into, uh, into 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 <laughs> over the shoulder. So, if they were to come back, you know, is it easy enough for them to kind of go right? We we've kind of got a base build or at least an engine build for an over the shoulder Dino Crisis game. Oh my god! Right, we've got to build the assets and put yeah, them in yeah. there. But, but like we have the, the, the we, ha structure. we have the we have the structure exactly. We have that build there to be able to kind of do it. And Please. rather than say like, rather than returning to Dino Crisis and saying we've remastered this game, they could just say, "Hey, we make it. Yeah. Let's just let's just fucking bash out Dino Damn Crisis yeah. Four or whatever." Or it, remake it, Dino Crisis One, please. Uh, or, I, mean, I love it. I mean, they could remake Dino Crisis One in a over-the-shoulder style kind of game. Ben exactly. Ben but then, but I'm, where do you take that? Like, do you just say, "Do you just say fuck it? Here's a new Dino Crisis game." It's over I, the shoulder. It's I a new honestly Dino think Crisis they could. They, they could do because I don't think the Dino Crisis. That's the thing when I see, when I see like um I thought I was the only one. Me yeah. and Dave, like Dave, <laughs> it was like yeah. yes, Dino Crisis. But it's like when you see so many things are like, what games should we remake next? And everyone's saying Dino Crisis. There's yeah. a lot of love for this series. It's like, yeah. do you imagine? Could you? That's why, like Horizon Zero Dawn, filled a hole, a massive hole in my heart because I could kill robot dinosaurs. But it's like, <laughs> uh, 
Could you imagine, like, Resident Evil 2? Because Resident Evil 2, I will say this, is fantastic. It's one of the best games of the year. I said that mm. before it even came out. It looks mm. fantastic. I pl- this got me back into, like, the Capcom sphere. And it's sphere, like, yeah, yeah, it, it got Capcom me back universe. into, like, yes. And it's like, this. It, it's, it, it's fantastic in every single way. It's only because I don't like those style of games where it's like, why it took me right. so long. But it's actually immense. I haven't played, um, what's it called, uh, Devil May Cry, but that's got higher review scores. So I yeah, can't even has, imagine yeah. how that's yeah, going. Well. doing well. Yeah. But Resident Evil yeah. 2 is essential for this year. Mm-hmm. I always said it could be Game of the Year contender, depending yes. on games that it comes out this year. And it still is, but it's like... Uh... Imagine if they did that Dino Crisis with dinosaurs, <laughs> pterodactyls, yeah, I mean, and velociraptors wrong. running down the corridor. <laughs> so let's finish there this you week sure? with Lucy's I just final talk, thoughts I, about Dino Crisis. Swiftly talk about the occupation. No, we'll leave that. We'll leave that for next week. We'll leave that for next week. You sure? Because yeah, I don't yeah. have glowing things to say about it. Yeah, I don't okay. know. No, no, we'll, th- we'll leave that for next week. <laughs> that's a, that's a <laughs> good. That's I a good. I want to hear I'll the glowing you things. Comments. I want to hear them in detail, and so we'll we'll deal with them next week. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say you so camera. because <laughs> we've I've got some time. I might actually buy the game and play mm-hmm. it, and then we can also talk about it. Mm-hmm. I just want to say to you listeners, um, look at reviews before you buy. Oh, oh I thought she was going to say die in the fire. Um, because <laughs> I know Lucy loves our listeners, of course. <laughs> so, right. we've all drunk several beers this week. Lucy, mm. thank you. Uh, what beer did you prefer out of, uh, not just the beers you drank on the record Hard, but, tonight, but, but tonight, yeah. the beers you drank tonight? Um... I went to Loka Polly's Cam Launch. Um, mm. Had three APAs. They were pretty um, all similar, not in a uh, dis- disparaging way. Right. Uh, they were very much juicy IPAs, um, about 6 7%. Those were very nice. Um, what have I drank today? I, I, I had an APA right. <laughs> from Moncada. That was very middling. Um, multi, hoppy, good, but not great. Um, did I have anything before that or after? I don't know what. <laughs> uh, it, recently, oh, oh, the crack bit that was that was gorgeous. Yeah, um, that was um, uh, gorilla. That was that was really yeah. good. That was like a, almost like a brute IPA. It was like very mm. quick finish, but very juicy at the same time. That was really good. And I, whilst these a lot were talking, or well, I was talking about Dino Crisis because I want that back. Huh. Please, um, I was uh, cracking open a beer from Wonder Beyond Brewing because oh, wow. I had a I had a beer from them last week, which was like a mojito. I realised yes. I had that before, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I actually graded that. On untapped higher oh. <laughs> than I had on that um, podcast. Probably kind of mood thing. It's like if if you want a mojito, and that's a right. great beer to have. So probably if you're looking for cocktails, that's a great thing to have. But yeah, this wonder beyond. Um, it's called Seven Forest IPA, seven percent. That was very juicy, very fruity, very very viscous, very New England IPA. Um, but, um, yeah, the crack, I always feel weird saying that, the crack, crack yeah, uh. the crack gorilla. Yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, good. IPA, really good, really good. Just, just seek out any of the beers. Mm. That's the one for me. How about you, Ben? Nice. Uh, for me, I actually think it's the cloud water. Interesting. Okay. Um, it was a very easygoing yeah. IPA. Totally. Really, uh, really simple. Did some very nice flavors. Very. It, uh, it did what it did. wanted to do well. Exactly. I think every other beer we've drank has tried to do something, and, and not quite has not. The mark. It, it, it's not that maybe. It's not that maybe they haven't done what they wanted to do, but for me, it they've done something that maybe hasn't quite hit my f- 
preferred taste profile possibly yeah um you know <laughs> the, the the latest beer that we had which was the um oh, west coast dipper from north yep and uh, with duration was a nice yeah. beer beautiful nose uh had a nice kind of you know that we as we yeah. were kind of discussing that kind of orangey citrus kind of yeah. flavor um and it's kind of you know uh, it's a bit of a back and forth kind of like yeah this is nice when it's doing something else this is yeah that that cloud water the ipa just was just it just did what it wanted it just did what it was going to do and it was a good beer no, it's, like, it's it's one of those things where like staying the course ends up winning because yeah if you're going <laughs> to do x then if you do x really do x. well i don't yeah. i don't need you to do anything beyond x x gonna give it to you yeah um Completely. Yeah. There's uh, a Mr. X. Uh, my... No. Uh -oh. oh, that's da, a really da, 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 da. Oh yeah, there's a Thomas the <laughs> Tank <laughs> Engine one. Uh, I'm, I'm, and I, I, then I, there's totally... a Thomas the Tank Engine versus. <laughs> yeah. Fucking DMX. Just let it go. Just let it go. This is why just you just do not buy games on PC. Just let it go. It's fine. Buy games on PC. Um. So I'm. I. I. I hear what you're saying, and I. I think I'm actually going to lean towards the Wicked Weeds. Okay. Um, mm. the, it looks like so, a good ass beer. Yeah, so so, so the bourbon barrel aged Imperial Stout from the, the, the Dark Age. <laughs> oh, obviously, the flavor text is a little over the top. Yep. Uh, I'll fuss you on those. Sorry, motherfuckers. North Carolina. <laughs> it, you just be six. Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Don't be flower. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But like, so what I really enjoyed about it was, um, as a stout, an imperial stout, it did what it, like, I expected. Yeah, it made but, you incoherent. Yeah. Which is but, but what like, you The extra steps that were involved were interesting. So like, we, we had a real, like, strong conversation about, like, what it is for a, like, stout to be informed in this strong way and, like, what the merits are and what the yeah. factors are of um, this like really heavy notion of like making an imperial stout and none of that was super negative sure it was like oh this this beer sparked conversation no it, no what it... i honestly really enjoyed that conversation when ben you were off camera <laughs> and also the the fact that I thought that the independent um, Westport independent conversation would be like two mm. seconds, yeah. and it evolved <laughs> into a proper in-depth conversation. Yeah. So yeah. I really enjoyed so, that. Yeah, and so that I beer think, is the catalyst of that. Yeah, so I think the Dark Age, well, like, first of all, it didn't taste like twelve percent. No, no. Um, <laughs> but, the, the reason, so specifically, the sweetness and like the like cumbersome nature of the alcohol. Um, they married well into the taste such that like you wanted it to be sweet when it was sweet but also it had to be because it's 12 percent mm -hmm. and that was really good craftsmanship um but it just honestly like i i it had some bourbon notes but not a lot and like it made me appreciate like what it means like it, it made me think about what it means to put yeah. age beer in like whiskey or mm. like other alcohol casks and i found it really interesting and again i could not could not tell it was 12 percent yeah. even when i was like the reason why it's super sweet is because <laughs> it has it's 12 percent but the way they like melded the it those rolls. things together yeah yeah, and yeah. So we, we it, literally it, it, spent about a half very an finely crafted beer and beer. that's what made it for me was like I, I wouldn't necessarily like hit it up every time, but like everything I observed about it made sense given its mm. sort of positioning, yeah. and that's yeah. not easy to do. Yeah, yeah, it sounded like it was really well balanced but complicated beer. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly it. It's, get that. it's well Fresh balanced truth. despite yeah. the fact that they've tried to balance a bunch of mm. things. Yeah, we've talking about. That's what makes it my beer. It's because it, it's trying to do a lot and i managed to do a lot yeah yeah we were going That's into fun. existential conversations about stouts and porters yeah anything that makes which, which are that. my favorite types of conversations <laughs> good conversation <laughs> so if you've enjoyed our conversations this evening you can get hold of us in several different ways 
at tanked up underscore cast on Twitter, tanked up cast at gmail.com. Go to outoflives.net. You can get me at nova underscore 47 almost everywhere. Lucy is juicy loose nine everywhere on all everywhere. All everywhere on all the things. Adelaide is at the, the Omniarch everywhere except Twitch. Where the underscore Omniarch, but also it, Ben forgot that on Instagram. In in Instagram. We, we, uh, we, and I say that because yeah. I know Ben's been good and actually taking pictures of things, and I can send last week's pictures. I'm happy you. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm a good person. millennial. I think I'll I'm a week. I think I'm a week behind in it's being fine. a good millennial. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, it makes me I'll be a millennial. Um, also, <laughs> special shout out to our special International Women's Day guest. Yeah, um, I, I'd like to say that. Yeah, and. Uh, I, I mean, all, I, the, all I, the badass women. The, the I, don't know, I don't know how much she's yeah. going to appear in the final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get the edit will be confusing. Uh, I, I, I want more of that like dynamic. Mostly, I want like Lucy and Kim had a good conversation or two, and I'm curious what those were because yeah. to, oh, half of that no. I didn't. Uh, I'm gonna nah. have to listen back. Yeah, you I are. Yeah, no, you honestly, have, you're have yes. To edit, but, Happy yeah. International Women's Day and. Woo! All the uh, people are like, where's International Day? I have oh, two go, great go, men go here. Yeah. My Just podcast. Uh, also, also, International Men's Day is no, in November. every other day. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know. No, no. There is, there is an International Men's Day. Yeah, it's there in is. November. But so, I mean, you don't, listen, fire. You, you don't listen to this <laughs> podcast if you actually give a shit about what it's My point is, like... Is. If you understand what International Women's Day represents, you understand that every other day is International Men's Day by default. So yeah. if you're going to complain say, about blah, just die in a fire. Like, just die in They a always fire. say behind every great man is a great woman, but every great man... Fruit. Every great every, fruit is Every is two a great men girl. on this uh, podcast, okay. there's a great woman. Hey! Yeah, there we go. She's hey. these two. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we're, all great, we're all great people, for God's sake. We're fantastic, <laughs> and Let's all Lucy is part of that other. fantasticness, and Kim is Let's part all... of that fantasticness. Absolutely. This is the best and job. it was a really great day, and, and like, if, if you want, like, some help editing, because... Of <laughs> no, I say this because I actually want as much of the weirdness. Oh, I'm going to send it all to you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's totally fine. So, we're all great. Especially yeah. Kim. That's we are. Yeah. Definitely. We are she's all... mum and a child. So she's a really great woman. Yeah. <laughs> she is yeah. out on us all. She has. Absolutely. So, <laughs> for another week. For another week. We've been Don't peek, excellent peek, no. women. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> oh man, that's... I, I, can't, I, I literally can't top that. So I'll say ciao. Um... Yeah, like, uh, if I end up editing this, the, well, I'm gonna loop that moment <laughs> because that was boy, great. Boy, 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 boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Oh, it's good. No, uh, boy. No, <laughs> boy. Stop, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. that fucking Christopher boy, Judge Kratos is just boy. fucking. Yeah. That's an intense fucking boy. Uh,